even in many other indoor football leagues. So third and 10, Omaha's got to get to the Sioux City 21. From the 18, shotgun set, twins to the right. Bernard takes a low snap, drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, fires right side, and Calvin Phillips makes a one-handed juggling grabs as he takes it across midfield into Sioux City territory at the 19-yard line, and that's good enough for an Omaha first down. A beef first down to the 19-yard line of Sioux City, and that will continue this drive for Omaha. Great stop on the first two plays by Sioux City. But kind of finished the job on third down. Omaha this season only a 37% converter of third down plays. So Bernard will come back to the shotgun set. He'll have twins to his left in those black jerseys with the orange shoulders. They'll fake the handoff and throw a deep ball right side towards the end zone. And Xavier Span makes an incredible one-handed tip pass into the seats for an incompletion. Xavier Spann, one-on-one -on -one coverage with Javon Bell, and that is not an island you want to be on if you're Javon. The tip pass by Xavier Spann will bring up second down and 10 for the Omaha Beef. At the Sioux City 19-yard line, right in between the right and middle hash marks here in Omaha, Nebraska. Ralston Arena, the site. Twins to the right of Bernard in the shotgun set. One to his left, sends two in motion. And he'll take the snap, drop back to pass, blitz coming up the middle, fires right side, and that pass complete near the boards at the 11-yard line. That's Donovan Raspberry who hauls in that completion, an eight-yard completion to the 11-yard line. And it will be now be third and two for the Omaha Beef at the Sioux City 11. So a good job by the Bandits so far, but now a tough test here on third down, pounding on the doorstep of the red zone are the Omaha Beef. With 11.34 left to play in the first quarter, no score in this football game. Omaha lining up under center, single back of the backfield, twins to the right. They're going to fake the end around and hand it off to Calvin Phillips up the middle. He's stuffed at the 10, and Sioux City's going to hold on a third and short. Kenneth Maxwell, C.J. Jones, Ben Peaster, and Ron Franklin all there on the stop. It's a one-yard gain for Phillips, and now a crucial fourth down in inches for the Omaha Beef, right pounding on the doorstep of the red zone. Omaha shut down on a third and two that they thought they had. Instead, it'll be fourth down and one yard to go for the Omaha Beef. Here is Omaha lining up under center, and it'll be a QB keeper for Derek Bernard, and he's got the first down yardage. A two-yard quarterback keeper by Bernard right up the gut, and that'll be first down and goal now for the Omaha Beef. So first and goal for Omaha as they've been doing a great job of getting downfield to this point here in the contest. First and goal at the nine-yard line. The Beef, shotgun set for Bernard, twins to the right, one to the left of him. Bernard sends him in motion and will fake the hand or will give it on a handoff to Javon Bell who came around in motion, the wide receiver. He gets three yards on a bit of an end around carry by Bell and it will now be second down and goal from the six yard line. So with 9.53 left in the first quarter, Omaha on a second and goal at the Sioux City six yard line. Beef doing a phenomenal job on offense so far, and they're pounding on the goal line. Sioux City trying to bend but not break. Here we go, second and goal at the six. Bernard sends one in motion to the left side to make twins. Bernard, shotgun set, hands it off Phillips, right side to the five, towards the corner, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Beef. Calvin Phillips into the end zone for the third time on the ground this season, and the Beef lead the Bandits here in the early going, six to nothing with 9.20 left in the first quarter. So the Beef get an early score, and now Ezekiel Arevalo will come out for the point after try. Try and make this one an even 7-0 ball game. Arevalo on the season has missed 10 point after tries all year. So a 6-0 ball game, Beef lead, but the Bandits have not had an opportunity on offense yet. About a five minute and 40 second drive by Omaha, eating a lot of time off the clock. Snap, ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is wide right. No good. 
Ezekiel Arevalo's point after try is no good. And we will head to our first break with our score, Omaha six and Sioux City nothing with 9.20 left in the first quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, Sioux City. Great news. Northwest Bank has a new seconds. loan special. How's it, how's it, how's it, how's it do after that first list. little bit? Take that dream vacation. We're going to jump. Uh, doing better right now, at least. Okay. I don't, I don't know, I'm getting full bars on my jetpack and full bars on the connection. Oh, it did. Right now, I'm cutting out. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMN. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS and uh, iHeart Radio. Still dealing with our intermittent technical issues. Cutting out again. Here from Omaha, Nebraska. As the Omaha Beef lead the Sioux City Bandits by a score of six to nothing here in the early going. Nine minutes and 20 I'm seconds. Yeah, your connection's garbage right now. Uh, I don't know what else. Since 1933, Electric is a forward-thinking, innovative leader. Yeah, this is garbage. Okay. Back to their business, including arc flash analysis. I'll try and Infrared restart my jetpack. And solar energy. Are you on the uh, building Wi-Fi or your hotspot? No, I'm I'm on my hotspot. I'm talking to you on the phone right now. I'm on my hotspot, but it's not. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, I'm gonna get my hotspot a restart really quick, so. Is the hotspot plugged in for power? Yeah, it is. That tends to be what does that, too. Okay. I'll unplug it and then turn it back on. Mega Money on the $350,000 Mega Money Wheel, only at Buena Vegas Casino Resort. Things just go right when you have the perfect tan from Suntan City, like getting asked out by the lead singer of your favorite band. Your tanning experience will go right, too, thanks to the experts at Suntan City. They really get to know you and recommend the right sun bed or spray tan. And then you go, because when the perfect tan gives you that inner glow, it's a little shiny. Dressing about doggy accidents on your carpet is a thing of the past with Lifeguard waterproof backing from Shop Wars at Novus Carpets. The patented Lifeguard backing system repels soap so they don't soak through to create odor-causing stains that are hard to remove. If you have pets and kids, be confident your home is clean and fresh with Lifeguard Carpets from Shop Wars at Novus Carpets. Visit Novus Carpets today, Glen Avenue, Sioux City, and online at noviscarpets.com. We all know how important electricity is in our everyday lives. Going without it for even a minute can really make getting things done difficult. Turn to the professionals at Ward Electric for all of your power needs. Charlie Hacker and his team are your trusted source for your next commercial, residential, or industrial project. Charlie brings expertise and over 30 years of experience to your job site. He'll help you plan, design, and build the most effective electrical system for your own business. Call Ward Electric and Sergeant Bluff today. 271-2600. So what does a good time sound like? Does it pack a punch? This is for the UFC light heavyweight belt. Here we go. Off the grid. All right, I'm calling back on the Skype. See if it Here we go. connects. A good time can sound like just about anything. But there's one test, test, one, two, three, four, test, test one, two, three, four. Every time. Talk again. Test one, two, three, four. Like one, two, three, now. four. Dead right now. Okay. And welcome back to Ralston Arena. Apologies for our technical issues. Hopefully we've got it figured out right now. Right now the Bandits on offense on third down and about two from the Omaha 24-yard line. Turner gets a man to jump off sides, hands it off to Jenkins up the middle across the 20. And he's down at the Omaha 18-yard line with 6.59 left to play in the first quarter. Sioux City has already eaten up about 2 minutes and 21 seconds of the 
first quarter clock on this drive. Omaha scored a touchdown to make it six to nothing over the Sioux City Bandits here in the early going. And right now, Sioux City trying to march their way down the field. We do look like we have an offsides penalty, and we do. Offsides on the Omaha Beef. That's going to give Sioux City an automatic first down without even the carry by Bubba Jenkins. And so, first and 10 for Sioux City. They're going to be lined up at the Omaha 18-yard line. So now it's Turner under center. Twins to the right, one to his left. He'll motion one to the right side to make trips. Turner drops back to pass. Pump fakes a screen play. Fires deep down the right sideline. And the pass overthrown and incomplete of Londell Lee as that ends up two rows deep in the seats. And it will be second down and 10 after the incompletion by Dylan Turner here from Ralston Arena. Right now the score, six to nothing Omaha in a winner, win or go home contest Sioux City and Omaha here's second and ten at the Omaha 18 yard line single back in the backfield twins to his right one to his left Turner sends two in motion and crosses the motion pattern hands it off to Lee left side of the 15 spin moves off a tackler still on his feet to the 13 on the far side of the field and that's gonna get about five yards to make it third down and five for Sioux City deep in Omaha territory at the 13 so Sioux City has done a good job on this possession so far, trying to keep it going with 5.52 and counting left in the first quarter. Sioux City trailing Omaha six to nothing here on a third down and five. Sioux City walks to the line of scrimmage under center, single back of the backfield is Dylan Turner. Twins to his right, one to his left. Turner drops back to pass on third and five, fires right side, short pass complete to London. And London is down inside the five yard line. That's a nine yard completion to London. And it'll be first down and goal for Sioux City at the Omaha four yard line. So Sioux City now has a fresh set of downs on first and goal, trying to tie the ball game and have, have an extra point to take the lead here in the early going. First and goal at the five. Turner under center, twins to the left, one to his right. Turner sends two in motion and hands it off to Bruno on it and around has a block up ahead and he's caught in the backfield. That's a loss of a couple yards there on an end around play by Bruno and it'll be a two yard loss to bring up second down and goal from the seven. Boy, the beef showed up and are making a lot of noise here tonight in Ralston Arena for a great environment of football here in Omaha. Second and goal at the seven, Sioux City. Shotgun set for Turner, twins to his left, and one to his right. The twins will motion to the right side to make trips on the right side. Turner pitches it right for Jenkins. He's stuck in the backfield again. That's gonna be a loss of one on the play. On the stop by Kwame Bell, a clarion product. Loss of a yard brings up third and goal at the eight for Sioux City. And the Beef have forced tackles for loss on the last two plays of Sioux City. Four minutes left in the first quarter. The Beef lead the band at six to nothing. Here on third down and goal from the eight. Play clock down to 20. Sioux City, Turner in the shotgun. Twins to his right, one to his left. Trying to score on this play. No motion, Bruno to the right side for trips. Turner drops back to pass. Looks for the end zone, steps up in the pocket. Uh, pressure coming to his left. He breaks a sack, bounces off a blocker, throws a lob ball in the end zone, and it is caught! It is caught, no, it is incomplete. Londell Lee thought he came down with the football. Instead, it hit the turf incomplete. And it'll be four down and goal as Greg Connery comes out for the field goal attempt. It was a jump ball into the end zone and Londell Lee had initial contact with the football but did not come down with it. And so after all of that, now a field goal try coming up by Greg Connery. This will be, if it's good, a 23-yard field goal attempt to make this a 6-3 ball game. Not a lot of scoring right now. Here's a snap. Ball is down. The kick is up, end over end, and it is straight through the uprights and good. 6-3 is our score. 2.42 left to play in the first quarter. Beef lead, we'll take a break and come back after this media timeout. 
to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. At Heartland Chiropractic, you'll find that doctors who really care is so much more. Yep. Because along with five doctors of chiropractic care, the entire staff is dedicated to the alleviation of pain. Heartland Chiropractic at 711 Two Point Road in Dakota Dunes and 3403 Stinging Hills Boulevard. Look for them in the white and yellow pages of your phone book. Three Rivers Transportation, your truck load carrier, is a full-service transportation intermediary for over-the-road shipping. Three Rivers, since 1977, will give you confidence that your shipment will arrive safely, on time, and at a competitive rate. Three Rivers Transportation wants to wish the Sioux City Bandits the best of luck throughout the football season with the host of another championship. See GetYourLoadCover.com for all Three Rivers Transportation information. Bandit Indoor Football is the Fox Sports Radio 620 KM. Welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS and iHeartRadio. Our score with two minutes and 42 seconds left of the first quarter is Omaha 6, Sioux City 3. It was a rushing touchdown for Omaha by Calvin Phillips that put the beef on the board first. And for Sioux City, it was a 23-yard field goal attempt by Greg Connery that was bang through the uprights to try and cut into the lead a little bit. But now Omaha will have the offense coming out of this media timeout with two minutes and 42 seconds left of the first quarter. So far, Omaha with the early advantage. But Sioux City has usually struggled on their first offensive possession of the game most games this season. And so giving them another opportunity on offense and another opportunity on defense will see what this team is truly made of as we get ready to come out after the kickoff. Greg Conry will be kicking from left to right from the Omaha end zone. And the beef will be returning out of the beef end zone here in Ralston Arena. A very solid crowd here at Ralston Arena considering the other festivities going on in Omaha with the College World Series. Of course, they don't play until Monday, but it's still good to see a full crowd here for indoor football. Conry's ready. He'll be kicking from the left side of the field, and he'll send a line drive, knuckleball, squib kick, taken out of the end zone by Chris Perry. Perry takes it up near side to the 15-20, and that's as far as he'll get to the 21-yard line. Zach Slugger's going to shove him into the boards out of bounds at the 22, and will be first and 10 for the Omaha Beef at their own 22-yard line. Good kick return so far by the Beef. And Sioux City will now have a tougher defensive stand as the Beef will start there at their own 22. So we'll see what Sioux City can do. They did a phenomenal job of getting the Beef to about third down uh, and fourth down yardages, but were unable to stop them on any of those third down plays. And it's even more intriguing considering the Beef were Coming into this contest, only 37% on third down conversions. Shotgun snap, Bernard fakes the handoff, play action, drops back to pass, and he's sacked. Braden Mainz with the sack, along with Ben Peaster in the backfield. That's a loss of three on the play, and it will bring up second down and 13 for the Omaha Beef. A great job by Braden Mainz and Ben Peaster. Ben Peaster, a name that Beef fans, I'm sure, will be happy once he's retired. It'll be second down and 13 for Omaha at their own at 19-yard line. Bernard in the shotgun, twins to his left, one to his right. Phillips, the man in the backfield. The twins to his left go in motion. Bernard drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, fires left side, and that pass is complete at the Sioux City 20-yard line. That's going to be Javon Bell who hauls in that completion. And that is a gain of about 11 yards, and it will come up just shy of the first down marker for third down and two for the Omaha Beef. So the Beef facing a third and short in Sioux City territory at the 20-yard line. With a minute and three seconds left in the first quarter. Beef only up by a field goal, 6-3 to three over Sioux City here in this win or go home ball game. Shotgun set for Bernard, twins to his right, one to his left. 
Drops back to pass, fires right side, and that pass is complete. Donovan Raspberry makes the catch inside the five yard line on the far side of the field of the two. It's an 18 yard completion to Raspberry, and it will be now first down and goal for the beef. The Sioux City secondary gets burned on that play just a little bit. And with that, it'll be first and goal at the two for Omaha. Omaha with another great opportunity to put points on the board here in this contest. Six to three, our score, beef lead. 10 seconds on the play clock, 10 seconds on the game clock. Three second differential, Bernard in the shotgun, emotions one to the left side. Drops back to pass, screen play, Bell, left side, gets upended at the one yard line. Ron Franklin makes the stop, and the momentum carries Bell to the three, or to the one, excuse me, and that will end the first quarter of play. Our score, Omaha six, Sioux City three, at the end of one quarter of play. We'll take a break and we'll return to Ralston Arena in a 60 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. Get together. Oh, you grab an ice cold beer and they fix you a plate of your favorites? Well, that's the same feeling I get at Texas Roadhouse. They're famous for their fresh and cut steaks, all off the bone grill, made from scratch sides in a fun family like atmosphere. In fact, I tell the folks the only difference between coming home and going out to Texas Roadhouse is they don't make you clean up and do the dishes. Come on, come join the family at Texas Roadhouse. The first time you hit the ball, when you beat your personal best or that feeling of finally crossing the finish line. Some moments in life are pretty amazing, and so are you. We're here to cheer you on, to coach you forward, to help you do your best so you can achieve any dream or goal. We believe you're worth celebrating. You're what we care about most and why we do what we do. Because people are amazing, and we're here to help keep them that way. Unity Point Health. Know how much you matter to this world. Banded into a football in the Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS and iHeart Radio. Our score at the end of one complete quarter of play is Omaha 6, Sioux City 3. We'll switch sides of the field. Omaha now going towards the beef end of the field. And we'll have second and goal at the one yard line. Omaha who has stolen a little bit of a goal line stand by Sioux City, has three men in the backfield, hands it off right side. Miller punches through, and he's denied at the line of scrimmage. Maybe even a loss of a yard on the play. Darian Miller, the former bandit, stopped in the backfield, and it will now be third and goal from the two. They did force a loss of yardage on that play. Great job on the first two plays by Sioux City at the goal line. And they'll have third and goal at the two. C.J. Jones going to sub in for Zach Slugger on this play. So we're just getting getting underway here with the second quarter of this ball game. Omaha up six to three over the Sioux City Bandits, and only have five seconds on the play clock. And we will get a stoppage of play and a timeout from the Beef. So a timeout by Omaha. Our score six to three over the Sioux City Bandits. Beef trying to play for that second final spot of the Northern Conference standings. 14-15 left in the first half. And Sioux City trails by three. Taking a look at games going on around the CIF. Amarillo is hosting the Oklahoma Flying Aces. Last I saw that score was 14 to 12 in favor of Oklahoma. And the other game going on, a big game in the CIF. Salina takes on Duke City. The winner of that will get home field advantage throughout the rest of the postseason should they continue uh, with the way they are both playing. Both teams eight and three, both teams at the top of their own division. And so that game pretty much for first place throughout the entire CIF. 14-15 left here in the first half, and it's 6-3 to three Omaha. As Omaha comes out of their first charge timeout of the half, the Beef line up here on third and goal. They'll have one man in the backfield and trips receivers to the right-hand side. They send two in motion. Bernard will just keep it himself to the left side. Nobody there, and he waltzes into the end zone for six. 
touchdown beef. It is 12 to three Omaha as Derek Bernard just walks right into the end zone. And the Beef now lead by nine points after the timeout. That's a great play call by Omaha and offensive coordinator Chuck Wright. He knew the defensive backs would cheat to that side with only three receivers, and that left the right side wide open. Nobody contested Bernard as he walked, in, walked into the end zone. Now Ezekiel Arevalo comes out for the point after try. He missed the first one of the contest, only the 11th one he's missed all season. High snap, ball is down, and the kick is straight through the uprights and good. It is 13 to three. Omaha leads Sioux City, 14-11 left in the first half. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio, 620, Cam and S, Sioux City. Are you looking for the best video production for your football team? Special events, hockey, dance, Volleyball, school concerts, swing choir. These are just a few of the events we do. You name it, we shoot it. Find out more at www.rbplive.tv or by calling 389-1447. RBP Sports Production. You're listening to Vantage Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 AM. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS and iHeartRadio. Our score with 14-11 left in the first half is the Omaha Beef 13 and your Sioux City Bandits only with a three so far, but this will be the second offensive possession of the contest for Sioux City after Omaha has had two already and has scored touchdowns on both of their attempts. So, uh, Ravelo out here for the kickoff duties. Back deep to return for Sioux City, C.J. Jones and Frederick Bruno. Here we go, the kickoff sent end over end, low, and it'll be taken by Jones, two yards deep in the end zone. Up the middle of the field, 5'10", 15, has a block up ahead to the 20, and he is upended and shoved to the turf at the 20-yard line, and that forces a bit of a squabble at the end of the play jones was lifted physically up in the air and thrown to the turf straight on his back that's a hard hit for any football player and it'll now be first and 10 for sioux city at their own 20 yard line trying to get into pater for the first time in this contest trying to get the touchdown here it's a very loud raucous environment here in ralston arena and it's good to see at least a bit of red here. Some Bandit fans making the trip down I-29, just an hour and a half to Ralston Arena. Here's first and 10 for Sioux City. They'll motion Bruno to the left side to make trips. First and 10 at the 20, Turner drops back. Deep pass, right side, it's caught. Fred Bruno to the five, touchdown Sioux City. Frederick Bruno into the end zone from 30 yards out. And the Bandits are into the end zone for the first time in this contest. It is 13 to nine beef. A touchdown pass to Fred Bruno, the seventh time this season he's hauled in a touchdown pass. And Sioux City now with a point after to cut it back to a field goal. So here comes Greg Conry for the point after try. Greg this season 61 of 69 on point after attempts. London to hold, the snap is rolled, but it's recovered and Connery still puts it through the uprights with a bit of a missed snap. So the kick is good, didn't take a whole lot of time off. 13.37 left in the first half, Sioux City trails Omaha 13 to 10 here in Ralston Arena. We'll take a break and be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. ACNR Specialists is your commercial and industrial refrigeration company offering parts, sales, service, and installation services. We offer phenomenal service at a low cost without compromising quality. Our technicians are knowledgeable, trustworthy, and available 24 hours a day. Give us a call with your refrigeration needs today. 712-255-8722. That's 712-255-8722. ACNR Specialists. Siouxland's refrigeration experts for nearly 40 years. Standard indoor football is on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS and iHeartRadio. The Sioux City Bandits trail the Omaha Beef by a score of 13 to 10. 
with 13.37 left to play in the first half. It's been a bit of a back and forth affair to this point. The only difference being Omaha scoring a touchdown and Sioux City scoring a field goal on each of their first possessions of the contest. Right now, 13 to 10 in favor of the Omaha Beef with 13.37 left to play here in the first half of this contest. We'll be sure to keep you updated of Salina and Duke City and Oklahoma and Amarillo coming up in the halftime report here from Ralston Arena. Here we go, Greg Connery ready for the kickoff, kicking from right to left, back deep to return. The usual suspects, Bell and Perry. They'll kick it, it takes a high bounce, and it'll be returned by Bell, left side of the field out of the end zone to the 5-10, and shoved into the boards in front of the Sioux City Bandit bench at the 13-yard line. Much better coverage that time by the Bandit kicking unit. And it only holds Omaha to start at their own 13. By comparison, the worst field position they've started with all contest. So it'll be first and 10 for Omaha at their own 13 yard line. Sioux City now got to be able to stop Omaha at some point if you want to catch up to them given this ball game. Can't just be trading points because right now you're losing that battle. 13 to 10, Omaha leads as the beef come out for their third offensive possession of the ball game. Twins to the right, they'll motion one to the left side for Twins to the left. Bernard takes a shotgun snap and fakes the handoff, keeps himself left side, and he is brought down by Braden Mainz, two yards in front of the line of scrimmage at the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and eight now for the beef at their own 15. Good stop there by Mainz. He just grabbed him there at the last second and almost pulled him down by the arm. That's about all he could get a grip of. So Mainz playing mainly linebacker here tonight with Zach Slugger sitting on the bench for Sioux City. He was off a week, and I'm sure that has given the coaching staff more confidence in Mainz. Twins to the right, they'll motion them, hand it off to Darian Miller. He breaks a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and is finally brought down at the Omaha 22-yard line. That's going to be just shy of the first down marker, and it'll be third down and one for the Beef near midfield. So a seven yard carry by the Beef. Brings up third down and one for Omaha. Got to get to the Omaha 23, currently at the 22 yard line. 12.07 left in the first half, 13-10 Beef. Under center is Bernard, sends two in motion, takes a snap, fakes the end around, hands it off Miller, right side, and he's stopped, I believe, just shy of the goal or the first down marker, and indeed, they stop him right at the line of scrimmage, and it will be fourth down and one for the beef at the 22. A big time stop by Sioux City, just shy of the first down marker, and the beef will have to convert on fourth down. The Beef are 62% this season coming into this contest on fourth down conversions, only failing 10 of them all season in 26 tries. So here we go, fourth and one, an empty backfield for Bernard, twins on either end of him. He takes a shotgun snap, fires right side, short hook route, complete to Raspberry at the 22 yard line of Sioux City. That's a six yard completion to Raspberry and it will bring up first and 10 for the beef in Sioux City territory. So Omaha bails themselves out on a fourth down conversion there and the beef will have first and 10 in Sioux City territory. Raspberry has come up big for the beef. He's only 5'8", 165 pound, but he's been a big target so far in this contest for Omaha. Bernard in the shotgun. Standing on one of the long horns of the Beef logo, takes the shotgun snap, hands it off right side Miller, breaks a tackle as he cuts his way through the O-line and dives forward for an extra couple yards. Yeah, they're going to give him seven on that play to the 15, and it'll be second down and three now for the Beef in Sioux City territory. At the 15-yard line, Brandon Jenkins is going to check into the ballgame for Randall Blash Jr. at the defensive tackle position. So Sioux City trying to slow them down here. Th or second down and three. Shotgun set Bernard trips to the left. Two of them will go in motion. Bernard, play action fake. Screen pass left side is going to be complete to the 10-yard line. And a flag comes in after the play. No, it was during the play, but in the backfield. That completion there to Clinton Solomon. But I have a feeling this is going to be coming back for holding. That's what it looked to be. Looked like one of the receivers, I believe, Raspberry, came back 
in disbelief with the holding penalty, and it looks like it is. It is holding. Holding on Omaha with 10.04 left of the first half. And that'll back up the beef of about 10 yards, and it'll bring up now second down and 13, all the way back to the Sioux City 24-yard line. That backs them up quite a bit. It'll be second and 12 for Omaha, and now a deeper distance to get. That hasn't stopped them before. They've gotten about 10 yards before on these long conversions. Second and 12. Bernard under, in the shotgun, excuse me, trips to his left. One man in the backfield. Bernard drops back a step and dumps it off right side on the flat to Miller to the 20, 15, and he's shoved into the boards by Xavier Spann at the 13-yard line, and that's going to be an 11-yard carry just shy of the first down marker, and it'll be third down and one and now for the Omaha Beef. Boy, here it is again, an 11-yard gain on a 12-yard conversion that needed to happen. So it'll be third down and one for Omaha at the Sioux City 13-yard line. With 9.18 left in the first half, Omaha trying to get back into the end zone for the third time in this contest. Sioux City needs a stop here. Under center is Bernard on third down and one. Twins to his left, sends in motion. Hands it off Miller up the middle to the 10, inside the red zone to the six. And that's going to be a seven-yard completion to Dar or handoff to Darian Miller. And it will be first down and goal for the beef at the Sioux City six in the red zone. Again, the beef continue to just trot their way down the field. Whether Sioux City has the advantage on one of those long conversions or not, Omaha has had the answer to whatever Sioux City's thrown at them defensively. Here's first and goal for the beef at the Sioux City six. With 8.25 left in the first half, a field goal lead for the Beef at 13 to 10. Long possessions in this ball game. Bernard under center, play action pass, fires right side. That pass tipped up in the air and incomplete. Lucky for the Beef, intended target there was Clinton Solomon. Xavier Spann got a hand on that pass. And it will be second down and goal now for the Beef. Boy, that one tipped just up in the air a little bit extra and had a bandit defender pin there, we could have been seeing the ball go the other way. Instead, we'll have second and goal at the six. Left hash mark is where this ball will start. Single back formation under center is Bernard, trips to his right, dumps off a screen pass right side. Bell makes the catch and dives into the end zone for six. Touchdown, Beef, and it's 19 to 10. Omaha continues to take a two-score lead over the Sioux City Bandits. With 7.35 left here in the first half, Sioux City has a hole to dig themselves out of. It's 19 to 10, Omaha with the advantage. Oh, here comes the point after try from Ezekiel Arevalo to try and make this an even 10-point ball game at 20 to 10. Here's the snap, the ball is down, and the kick is up, and it bangs off the uprights and shovels through. So it is 20 to 10, Omaha leads with 7.35 left to play in the first half. We'll take a break, and we will come back in 60 seconds to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Kamenas, Sioux City. Sioux Gateway Airport and American Airlines are proud to sponsor your Sioux City Bandit. We would like to thank Sioux City and the surrounding areas for supporting your local airport and American Airlines daily service to Chicago and Dallas-Fort Worth. Competitive fares and daily flights have proven to be a winning combination. Many customers have commented on how convenient it is to use the local airport and avoid traveling for hours by car and waiting in long lines at ticket counters or security checkpoints. Remember to fly as you ask and check for some great rates the next time you make your airline reservations on American Airlines at www.aa.com. Listening to Grant's Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio. 
radio 620 and welcome back inside Ralston Arena here in Omaha Nebraska Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS and iHeart Radio our score was 735 left in the first half is Omaha 20 and Sioux City 10 Winner of this contest moves on and will play Salina next week in the first round of the CIF postseason. And the winner of that heads to the championship game. This is the last game of the regular season, but it might as well be a playoff game for both teams. Arevalo ready to send off the kickoff from left to right. He sends a low nine, line drive knuckleballing kick taken by Bruno at the two. Far side of the field of the 10, breaks a tackle and is brought down at the 21-yard line. Fred Bruno with a good kick return for about 20 yards, and it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City at their own 22-yard line. So the Sioux City offense comes back onto the turf after Omaha has eaten up a lot of time. They've eaten up about six minutes of this ball game just on offense alone. So Bandits have first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. My goodness, it is. Gets louder by the quarter here in Ralston Arena. Turner lines up under center. He'll have twins to his left and one receiver to his right. Sends two in motion to the left-hand side. Turner drops back, hands it off left side to Todd Macon, and a flag comes out on uh, uh, two flags come out as Macon is brought down right back in the line of scrimmage at the 22. So I believe this is going to be a holding penalty called on Sioux City, but it is. Holding on to Sioux City. They're going to get Matt Ron for the hold. So it's a 10-yard penalty. Going to back them up all the way to their own 12-yard line. Not a good penalty there. As Sioux City will face a first and 20. Here with seven minutes left in the first half. So the Sioux City offense has to overcome this and get across midfield for their first down. First and 20 for Sioux City. Turner in the shotgun. He'll have twins to his right, one to his left. One receiver on either end will go in motion, and they'll motion Bruno to the right side to make trips. Turner drops back to pass, looks, and pump fakes. Fires right side to Macon on a flat. Cuts up the middle of the field, and Macon is brought down five yards in front of the line of scrimmage at the 17-yard line. A five-yard completion, and it will be second and 15 now for Sioux City at their own 17. Their goal is the Omaha 18-yard line. So from the Sioux City 17 to the Omaha 18, with 6-18 left in the first half. Sioux City walks the line of scrimmage. Under center is Turner, trips to the left-hand side. And two of them will go in motion. Turner drops back to pass, five-step drop, fires over the middle. That pass tipped up in the air and incomplete. Off of the shoulder of Andre London on the coverage for Omaha is Trey Dudley-Giles. And with that incompletion, it brings up a third and long for Sioux City. Third and 15 for Sioux City. At their own 17-yard line. My goodness, it is absolutely loud here at Ralston Arena. Shotgun set for Turner on third and 15. Twins to the left, Turner drops back to pass. Blitz coming, and he sacks. A five-yard loss on the sack. Kwame Bell with his third of the season, and the Bandits will be forced to try a long, and I mean long, field goal. From 38 plus another eight, plus the seven. You're looking at an over 50-yard field goal for Greg Conry. They're going to mark it out at the five. And so from the five, this will be a 53-yard field goal attempt for Greg Conry. If he connects, this will beat his longest of the season by 10 yards. So a big field goal attempt here for Conry from 53. They go on two, snap ball is down, and the kick is blocked. It's blocked by Kwame Bell, dove on by the beef, and they will have it in Sioux City territory at the 12-yard line. Conry's kick is blocked, and the beef recover, and they'll take over first and 10 near the red zone of Sioux City. Boy, this first half not going the way of the Bandits right now. And they're on the verge of mix, missing their first postseason since 2010. 
here in the first half. A lot of football left to be played, but it is, well, that's ominous. 20 to 10 is our score, 439 left of the first half. Bandits last time not making the postseason was their last season in the IFL in 2010. So first and 10 for the beef at their Sioux City 12 yard line. Shotgun set for Bernard, trips to his left. Bernard takes the snap, drops back to pass. The blitz is coming, fires over the middle, and that pass is intercepted. I believe Xavier Spann has it. No, it's caught for a touchdown. Touchdown beef, how did that happen? The pass is caught by Donovan Raspberry for a touchdown, and there's the red challenge flag immediately. My goodness, it looked initially like Xavier Spann had the interception, but instead Donovan Raspberry catches it for a touchdown. And the red challenge flag comes out for Irv Strobing. So somehow in that little grab for it, Raspberry must have taken it away from Xavier Spann in the back of the end zone. It looked initially like X had the interception and then all of a sudden the ref's arms go up to signal touchdown. So the, the two results of this play that are more than likely to happen are touchdown by the Beef or interception by Sioux City. That is where we're at right now. The two basically caught it simultaneously, but it almost looked like X got it there first. And if he did, this would be the sixth interception of the season for X. And now the Bandits gonna use this time with Coach Z and Marlon Loban to talk with their defense about what they need to do better here in this upcoming second half. There's 418 left in the first half, and right now the Beef lead by 16 points, 26 to 10 over the Sioux City Bandits, but that could change very quickly. Our officials right in front of the replay screen to determine how this play ends, either in six points or in a turnover. A lot riding on this challenge as the Beef continue to make a whole heck of a lot of noise here at the Ralston Arena. They just can't sit still. They cannot sit still. It is absolutely unbelievable the amount of noise that this crowd makes here in Omaha. Here comes our official. And it is ruled an interception. And Sioux City gets the football. X with the interception, his sixth of the season. Sioux City takes over first and 10 at the five. I thought X had that football first and it was taken out of his hands on the turf and the Bandits take over. That's Bernard's ninth interception of the season. And with the pick that gives Sioux City the football, takes the touchdown off the board, and we're back to a 20 to 10 ball game with 418 left in the first half. So Sioux City has 45 yards to go down the field. This will be first and 10 at their own five. Single back in the backfield for Turner, under center, twins to his right, one to his left. Turner sends two in motion, one on either end. Turner drops back, fires left side, a short completion to Frederick Bruno at the nine yard line. A four yard completion to Bruno, and it'll be now second and six at the Sioux City nine. Slowly but surely, Sioux City trying to make their way down the football field. A touchdown here would be great as we head down into the final four minutes of the first half. This game going by relatively quickly. Here's a shotgun for Turner. Twins to his right, one to his left once again. Turner will fake the handoff, keeps himself right side to the 15. He's got first down yardage and more to the 18 yard line. It's first and 10 Sioux City. A nine yard run by Dylan Turner brings up first and 10 for the Bandits. So that's the first time Sioux City has broken out the fake handoff quarterback keeper this contest. We might see it more now that they know it can have a little bit of success. Here's first and 10 for Sioux City at their own 18 yard line. Turner once again lines up in the shotgun, this time twins to the left, one to the right. 
Turner drops back to pass. They'll pitch it left for Jenkins. Jenkins to the 18, and he's shoved into the boards of the 20, and a flag comes in all the way from the umpire downfield. Or the field judge, excuse me, and we got holding called on Sioux City from an official about 15 yards away. Interesting. So that's going to back up Sioux City 10 yards. Initial line of scrimmage at the 18. The result of the play was about three yards. And we will get the call. Holding on Sioux City. So the 10 yard penalty will back up the Bandits to their own eight yard line, I do believe. The eight or the 10, they're gonna get them to the 10 and it'll, it will now be first and 18 for Sioux City at their own 10. Turner under center, single back of the backfield, twins to his right, one to his left. Here on first and 18 at the 10. Turner drops back, play action pass, looks right side and that pass complete on a short route to Fred Bruno at the 10 and he's shoved into the boards at the 13 yard line. Actually, Fred lost his shoe on the play. That's a three yard completion to Fred Bruno. Lucky to get anything on that play. And now they'll have second down and 15 to go for Sioux City at their own 13 yard line. 2.25 left in the first half. The Beef lead the Bandits 20 to 10. Beef with two timeouts left and the Bandits with three. Here in this contest, second and 15 for Sioux City. They got to get across the Omaha 22 yard line, starting from their own 13. Shotgun set for Turner. Twins to his right, one to his left. Turner drops back to pass. He'll dump it off left side. Bubba Jenkins now cuts up middle of the field, 15 20, and to the 24 yard line of Sioux City. That's a big gain of 12 yards on second and 15, and now it'll be third down and four for the Bandits at their own 24. A much more manageable third down and four for Sioux City. So here comes Sioux City to the line of scrimmage on third down and four. Turner gonna motion London near to the line of scrimmage, or excuse me, to the offensive line. Twins to the left, one to the right. Turner drops back to pass on third and four. Flag on the play. He'll lob it up deep downfield, and Londell Lee makes the catch in the end zone. Touchdown, Sioux City. Flag comes on the play, and we'll have to see what the call is first, and it's going to be a legal defense, I do believe. Touchdown will stand. Londell Lee into the end zone for six, and the Bandits cut it to a four-point game at 20-16 to 16 with a minute 19 left in the first half. So the Bandits score, Londell Lee, his 11th touchdown reception of the season, and Sioux City now within four with a minute and 19 seconds left in the first half. 20 to 16. The Bandits are right back into this contest as Greg Connery comes out for the point after try. They try and make this a field goal ball game. Here's the snap ball, his down kick is up, and it's off the upright, no good. And the point after is no good. 20 to 16 is our score. Sioux City trails Omaha with a minute 19 left in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Kamenetz, Sioux City. My favorite part about working with Seaboard Triad Codes is the people, whether it's management or the hourly person. I would recommend anyone to apply to Seaboard Triad Codes just to try the different opportunities and roles out here. People are the heart of the whole entire company, really. People are looking for a good job, great pay, good benefits. I think this is a good place to work. Everything that I've learned here is what I've learned here. I didn't have maintenance experience prior to coming here. Apply today at SiouxCityWork.com. Bandit Indoor Football is on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. 
Welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio, 620 KMS at iHeartRadio. Our score, Omaha 20, Sioux City 16, with a minute 19 left in the first half. Amarillo currently leading Oklahoma 44 to 30 at the half, and Duke City leads Salina 9 to 6. The kick by Greg Connery is going to bounce its way into the end zone at the six yard line. And so the beef will start first and 10 at their own six yard line. We'll be approaching the one minute warning here in 16 seconds of football. Omaha currently with two timeouts left in the first half. Sioux City would love to get the football back if they could here in the first half, try and get even closer in this ball game. The Beef will have first and 10 at their own six. Sioux City's just got to hold them off for the last minute of the first half. I believe the Beef will get a playoff before the one minute warning. A minute, five seconds. Bernard in the shotgun, trips to his right. Two seconds left before the one minute warning. And they will get the playoff, actually. Bernard fakes the handoff and keeps it himself left side to the 10. And he heads to a knee at the 11 yard line. It's going to be a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down and four. Now for Omaha at the 11. So second and four as the one minute warning hits here in Ralston Arena. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 30 seconds to Omaha, Nebraska. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. Bid and win this June at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Sioux City, with the spin session Wheel of Pass giveaway. Play with your Rockstar Reward Card at your favorite slot machines and tables to earn entry. Every Friday and Saturday in June, four lucky winners at each drawing will get to spin the wheel for a cash prize up to $1,000. Spin sessions, wheel of cash, all month long. Only at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Sioux City. Listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS and iHeartRadio. Our score with a minute left here in the first half is the Beef 20 and the Bandits 16 as we approach the one minute warning and are in the one minute warning here in the first half. So as I mentioned a few times, right now this is winner go home territory for both Sioux City and Omaha. Winner moves into the postseason and right now, as last I saw, Duke City was leading Salina nine to six. And so Duke City trying to vie for that home field throughout the postseason right now. If they win, they'd be nine and three with the best record in the CIF. And actually, if you're a Sioux City or an Omaha fan, you might want Salina to win that ball game just because you, either way, however you slice it out of the south, you'd be tied with whoever comes out of that, depending on Amarillo winning over Oklahoma. But the best you can be is tied with both teams coming out of the south. So actually, we might be Salina fans for that ball game against the Duke City Gladiators, but we'll see how that pans out right now in the second quarter nine to six Duke City so still a lot of football a lot of scoring left to come out of those two teams although not necessarily considering the first game between these two those two was a 29 to 22 victory by Duke City so could be low scoring you never know out of the one minute warning there'll be 57 seconds on the first half clock and it'll be second and four for the Omaha beef at their own 11 yard line so each team with two or more timeouts, Sioux City with three, Omaha with two here in the last few seconds. As Bernard drops back to pass on second and four, heaves a deep ball downfield towards the end zone and overthrows Javon Bell by about five yards into the end zone. And it will be now incomplete, third down and four for the beef. So Omaha with a long and loud incompletion. Stops the clock at 52 seconds here in the first half. Of course, regular football timings for the rest of the first half in the one minute warning. So it'll be third down and four. Omaha has got it, or I beg your pardon, third and five roughly. Omaha has got to get across the 16 yard line. 
So third and five, Bernard, twins to his right, shotgun snap, drops back to pass, fires left side, and that pass into the Sioux City Bandit bench and incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth down and long for Omaha, and out comes the kicking unit. So the Beef are gonna elect to kick a field goal attempt here on a long fourth down and five. So 20 to 16, Omaha with the lead over Sioux City and with 48 seconds left in the first half, the Beef gonna try a very long field goal. And if I got the math right, this will be a 55 yarder by Ezekiel Arevalo, which would be a New long by six yards. Bernard on to hold. The Beef have to get one more substitution out. They've got six seconds on the play clock for them to do so. Three seconds, not a whole lot of time left. One second, they get the playoff. Here comes the kick. It is tailing left and it's off the crossbar. No good and Sioux City will take over. First and 10 at their own five. Man. Arevalo's kick was dead center, but had he had one more spoonful of Wheaties, that might have been good. From 55 yards out, he almost banged one right through the uprights. Instead, Sioux City has the football with a chance, oddly enough, to take the lead before the first half is over. And the Bandits are in a great position to do so with 48 seconds left in the first half. They have three timeouts remaining, and it's 20 to 16, Omaha with the advantage. A touchdown here by Sioux City puts them up by two with the extra point, putting them up by a field goal. Here's Turner, he's in the shotgun, twins to his right and one to his left. They'll motion Bruno to the right side to make trips. Turner takes a shotgun snap, drops back four yards deep in the end zone, fires right side, short completion. Andre London makes the catch at the nine yard line and he's out of bounds on the far side of the field. It'll bring up now second down and six for Sioux City with the clock to 43 seconds here in the first half, stopping on the out of bounds play. That's what Sioux City's gotta do all the way down the field. It'll be second and six for the, the Bandits, trailing by four. 43 seconds left in the first half. Shotgun set for Turner. Twins to his left, motions Bruno to the left side to make trips. Turner drops back to pass towards the goal line. The blitz coming up the middle, and he is sacked at the one. Turner sacked, and they're gonna mark him down at the two. That's a big loss for Sioux City, and it more importantly keeps the clock going here in the first half. And Sioux City, I think, will have to call a timeout as the clock ticks down to 23 seconds. It's still ticking down to 20. It'll be a third down and very long for Sioux City. About a third and 13 for the Bandits. 12 seconds on the first half clock and now finally a timeout comes out from head coach or offensive coordinator Jared DeGeorgia. As Omaha or Sioux City uses their first of three charge timeout here into the first half with 10 seconds left. They're gonna put 12 seconds on the first half clock with our score 20 to 16 with the beef out in front. And unfortunately for the Bandits, they used up about 20 seconds waiting, just not really doing a whole lot. And so that is unfortunate. They don't have a whole lot of time left here in the first half. Granted, it is third down, so the play is not really in their favor right now. A long third down is upcoming for Sioux City. At this point, you're just trying to get into better range for Connery to hope he can put one through the uprights. So third down and 13 from the Sioux City two yard line. With 12 seconds left in the first half, Bandits trail by four, trying to get into better field goal range. Under center is Turner, single back trips to his left. He takes the snap, there's offsides, free play coming. Turner heaves it up, downfield jump ball. It is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Londell Lee and Fred Bruno inside the five yard line. But the flag I think is going to be in Sioux City's favor. I believe we're gonna get an offsides on the beef. Or it's a legal defense, excuse me. 
That's going to move the Bandits up five yards. And it will be third down and just shy of 10. So Sioux City might be able to get one playoff and if it doesn't work, still be able to call the timeout with a second left and try and kick a desperation field goal after that. Here's third down and just shy of 10. Third and eight, Turner in the shotgun, twins to his left, one to his right from his own seven. The motion to make trips. Turner bounces the snap and he's gonna be sacked and a timeout has to be called by Coach to Georgia, did he get the timeout off before halftime? The clock is at zeros. And I don't know if he got the timeout off in time. I don't think he did. I don't think he got the timeout in time, but we're gonna make sure beforehand. That's the end of the half. So Sioux City does not get the timeout off. They don't get a chance to kick a last second field goal. But the Bandits will have the football coming up to start the second half of action. Our score at the end of halftime, or at the start of halftime, is Omaha 20 and Sioux City 16. Our score here in the final game of the regular season for both teams. We'll take a break and we'll come back in a few minutes with our halftime report. Here from Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska, you're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. From time to time, you just want something different, like a new car or a new car buying experience. Experience the Sioux City Ford Lincoln difference, like the lowest price clearly marked on every vehicle. Our friendly, non-commissioned staff make it possible. We put you first, making auto buying a relaxed and enjoyable experience. We are a team of people who understand the value of being a good community partner by giving back to the community we serve. Come into Sioux City Ford Lincoln and experience the difference. Or visit us online at SiouxCityFord.com. Ultimate Fitness is proud to be the official fitness center of the Sioux City Bandits. We have three great 24-hour locations in Sioux City, Sergeant Bluff, and Beersford. Ultimate Fitness offers unlimited tanning, personal training, boot camps, taekwondo, kickboxing, yoga, saunas, massage therapy, and more. Come and see why we are Siouxland's number one 24-hour fitness center. Stop in and visit our newly expanded location under Science Nutrition off 19th and Hamilton. Check out our website at ultimatefitness24hour.com. That's ultimatefitness24hour.com. You need to come see the 2019 Subaru Outback at Justin Subaru. It comes with road gripping, standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, plus 32 miles per gallon. It helps keep your journey safe with standard EyeSight driver assist technology for an extra set of eyes on the road. And right now at Justin Subaru, the Outback starts as low as 26345 with as low as 0% APR. Justin Subaru is at 3909 Stadium Drive in Sioux City. Pricing does not include destination, delivery, tax title, and license. APR offer is with approved credit. What's that sound? That's the sound of IV delivering groceries to your front door. Or, if picking them up at the store sounds better to you, we'll bring them right to your car. With IV Isles Online, you can order anything from the comfort of your couch. And let us do the grocery shopping for you. Sound good? Then you'll love the sound of this. It's free with a minimum $100 order. Save time, shop online. Try HeidiIslesOnline.com today. Have you seen the crowd at the competition booth? They're just small. I know. Busier than I. Well, I just checked them out. You should see what they have. Hats, shirts, CD cases, mouse pads, koozies. Yeah, I asked one of their reps where they got everything. Yeah. Absolute screen art. I thought they just did sports stuff. So did I. Please, at Absolute Screen Art does everything for winning. Vince the team does for winning sports teams. My oh. God, what are we going to do with all these bags? Absolute Screen Art, 120 West 8th Street, South Sioux City. We've got your game. Job prospects are looking bleak. Short staff gets you paid each week. We've got transportation, too. We'll jumpstart your career for you. Getting people paid since 2012. Clyde's Grill and Pub offers great specials. Tuesday is a ground beef taco salad for only $10 with $4 margaritas and $3 Mexican beer. Whiskey Wednesday, $3.50 you call it. And $10 prime dip and fries. Thursdays is all American. Buy one of Clyde's famous Taft Town Burgers any style and go bowling on us. And don't forget Fish Bowl Friday. Get a 51-ounce aquarium margarita or Long Island iced tea fish bowl for only $15 with $5 flights of beer until 6 p.m. Also Friday, the Rubens is back. 
of Reuben and Fries for $9 all day. The weekend has Super Saturday with Prime Rib Night, Cosmic Bowling, and $15 buckets of beer. Sunday is Family Fun Day. Rush Lanes has unlimited Cosmic Bowling, including shoe rental for just $10 per person. $3 kids meals and chicken Alfredo for $10. It's Clyde's Grill and Pub, 3828 Stadium Drive. And welcome back inside Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Bersteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, and iHeartRadio. Our score at the halftime break is Omaha 20 and the Sioux City Bandits 16. Our score, as I mentioned a few times, the winner of this ball game moves on to the postseason to take on the Salina Liberty. And the loser, well, their season here in the CIF is over. Right now it's looking like the Bandits, they're trailing by four. Still a lot of football left to be played. But right now they are on the short end of this contest here against the Omaha Beef. Let's take a look at some stats, if we can get some of the right ones. Right now the stats page showing a score of 26 to 20, which is not at all correct, but I can give you what they've got. Some of it may not be correct just for future uh, warning. Dylan Turner is currently 10 of 13 passing for 95 yards and for two passing touchdowns here tonight. Londell Lee and Frederick Bruno, the two touchdown catch recipients for Sioux City. Each of them with two catches for about the same amount of yards, each of them with 33 yards here tonight. Bubba Jenkins, three carries for 18 yards. Londell Lee with a carry for five yards and the rest have been negative yardage gained for Sioux City. So not a whole lot of offense doing on the ground for the Bandits. Through the air, Omaha's Derek Bernard is 10 of 15 passing for 62 yards. Darian Miller, four carries for 26 yards. And Derek Bernard has one of the rushing touchdowns along with Calvin Phillips so far here tonight. Xavier Spann with the lone interception for the Sioux City Bandits here in this ball game. Of Trailing by four to the Omaha Beef, 20 to 16 is our score. Right now, Omaha six of eight on third down conversions, and that has been what has kept them in this contest to this point. Have they not been so good on third down conversions? I don't think the score would be anywhere near it is for the Beef in this contest. The Omaha has been Getting to a lot of third down conversions really in this contest, but has always been able to convert it, whether it's been third and long or third and short. Omaha's always been able to get the third down conversions here in this contest. Sioux City got to find a way to stop them on third down. And even if they don't stop them on third down, they got to stop them on fourth down because the two they've had were a missed field goal by Ezekiel Arevalo and one conversion for the beef. So Omaha not getting to a whole lot of fourth downs and well, that's because they're converting on third down a whole lot. Sioux City four of six on third down conversions, currently 0 of two on fourth down conversions as of this point. Again, all of these stats are unofficial as I believe they're having some issues with the uh, stats keeping here in this ball game because like I said, it says 26 to 20 uh, in favor of the beef on the stats screen, but that is Incorrect. So that's a look at what I can give you for halftime stats here in this contest. Let's take a look at some scores from around the CIF here tonight. The Venom lead the Aces currently by a score of 52 to 30. Amarillo trying to improve to 8 and 4. And a lot of defense being played in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Duke City leads Salina by a score of 9 to 6 at the halftime break. As I mentioned earlier, 29 to 22 was the final score between these two earlier in the season. So they're known for their defense and it's showing out here tonight in Albuquerque. Nine to six, the score there. Winner of that gets home field throughout the rest of the CIF playoffs. Omaha and Sioux City would love to be able to have an opportunity should they beat Salina to host a championship game. And if they want that opportunity, they're gonna have to let Salina win this one against the Duke City Gladiators and just be okay with that as Salina would improve to nine and three. Duke City would fall to eight and four. 
and Amarillo would be tied with them at eight and four as well, which would mean if somebody were to beat Salina in that first round of the postseason, then the two championship teams would be tied record-wise in the CIF. So lots of things there still left to be determined whether when it comes to postseason football. But as of right now, it's pretty well determined that Duke City and Salina host the first round of the postseason in both conferences. Duke City's opponent is determined. It's Amarillo. So Duke City and Amarillo is the first round matchup in the south. In the north, well, Salina is paying attention to this game just as much as they're paying attention to their own game because the winner of this heads to Kansas coming up next weekend. So lots of things, like I said, still to be determined here in the CIF. And it's all basically come to a point here in Ralston Arena. I knew seeing this schedule earlier in the season that the beef were going to be the tougher opponent, first of all, this season for Sioux City. Of course, Salina has proven to be a very formidable opponent as well for the Bandits, but the Beef are always a good team year in and year out. And when I saw this game at the end of the regular season, I knew something was going to, something was going to be on the line in this game uh, in Ralston Arena. Every time I said we'd be coming up to Omaha or coming down to Omaha, uh, coming up in a few weeks, I knew that that game was going to be big. And as the season folded along, it uh, just seemed to have gotten bigger. Now Sioux City on a three-game winning streak, fighting for their playoff lives. Omaha took seven of their first eight, including a streak for Omaha that saw them win six in a row, including a forfeit victory over the Texas Revolution, where they were supposed to go down to Texas to take them on. That's neither here nor there. It still counts as a victory into the stat sheet. They won six in a row, and yeah, the only loss earlier in the year for the Beef was to the Sioux City Bandits. Right now, though Omaha is seven and four, they are currently 0 and three against the top two, or their, their two teams around them in the Northern uh, standings. Wichita is the only team in their division that they've been able to beat to this point in the season, which at seven and one, should be able to beat teams in your division other than the last place team, but that has not been the case for Omaha. Their loss to Sioux City earlier in the year, of course, and then their, loss to, their two losses to Salina here in the final third of the regular season. 54-34 and 50-33 were the scores in those ball games for the Omaha Beef. But lots of football left to be played. There's still plenty of time. The Bandits will get the kickoff to start the contest at the beginning of the second half. Our score currently, Omaha 20 and Sioux City 16. So the Bandits getting the football first would give them an opportunity to take the lead, which would be crucial for Sioux City. And they had an opportunity there at the end of the second half, but ate up too much time waiting to call a timeout with about 30 seconds left in the first half. They let it tick down to about 12 and had only two plays. One play was a long incompletion downfield that had it been complete, might have allowed them to score before halftime and then added on to their lead. But instead, the pass was incomplete and then the sack forced the clock to run out for the last bit of the half. So with that all being said, the score 20 to 16 to hear the halftime break. We will take a break and we'll get you up to date on some of your national news from the team at Fox Sports Radio. But we'll take a break and we'll return to the second half of action here in Ralston Arena. A big half hour of football coming up when we return in just a few minutes to Omaha, Nebraska. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. We have a famous proud to announce our partnership with Creative Embroidery and Leroy Hanson Company. Bringing Sue Land, the area's largest in-house production in screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. Your orders will be done with the highest quality and on time. We're your one-stop shop for your team, group, or business. With the latest in technology, we can promise you the best quality for the best price. Wall of Fame and Leroy Hanson Company Creative Embroidery. Now located at 1501 Venus Drive. Or find us at wallofame247.com. This is firefighter Raphael Poirier from Firehouse Subs. Introducing new Firehouse Pairs. Pair your favorite small sub with a signature size, like the awesome five cheese mac and cheese. And remember, a portion of every purchase at Firehouse Subs goes towards helping first responders. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. 
Participating locations only. Firehouse subs will donate a minimum of $1 million in 2019 to Firehouse of the Public Safety Foundation by donating 0.11% of every person. Central Bank is a proud sponsor of the Sioux City Bandits. At Central Bank, we want to help you achieve your goals and dreams through checking, loans, and much more. Visit Central Bank in downtown Sioux City or check them out on the web at centralbankfdic.com. Central Bank, a proud sponsor of the Sioux City Bandits and proud to make your dreams come true. Central Bank, member FDIC. This is firefighter Raphael Poirier from Firehouse Subs. Introducing new Firehouse Pairs. Pair your favorite small sub with a signature side, like the awesome five cheese mac and cheese. And remember, a portion of every purchase at Firehouse Subs goes towards helping first responders. Firehouse Subs, enjoy more subs, save more lives. Participating locations only, Firehouse Subs will donate a minimum of $1 million in 2019 to Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation by donating 0.11% of every purchase. Great news! Northwest Bank has a new loan special to help you achieve those items on your wish list. Take that dream vacation or get a jump start on your spring project. Northwest Bank's home equity line of credit special rate of 3.25% APR fixed for six months, then variable rate thereafter, currently 3.75% APR. This rate is available for a limited time to qualified buyers. Stop in or call 1-800-678-4105 for details about credit costs and terms. Visit online at bank-northwest.com. Since 1933, Thompson Electric is a forward-thinking, innovative leader using the latest technology in every aspect of their business, including arc flash analysis, infrared thermal imaging, and solar energy. For more information, go to ThompsonElectricCompany.com or call 252-4221. Thompson Electric Company is a proud supporter of your Sioux City Bandits. Now. At Yankee Stadium tonight on Fox TV for part of the country, both the Astros and Yanks have two run homers. The game is 2-2 in the bottom of the sixth. Yankees with bases loaded, no outs, and Giancarlo stand at the plate. The Yankees have already homered now in a 25th straight game. That ties the franchise record. The major league record is 27. And by the way, Stanton has delivered at the plate, just back finally off the injured list this week. Two run single, it's 4-2. Yankees over Houston in the sixth. Elsewhere, National 7-4 leaders against the Braves, bottom of the fifth. Fifth inning in L.A., Rockies ahead of the Dodgers in Chungjin Ryu, 3-2. Great news, there's a quick way you can save money. Switch to Geico. Go to geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on car insurance. At the Women's World Cup, Germany eliminated Nigeria 3-0, and Norway on penalty kicks eliminated Australia in the round of 16. I'm Steve DeSig. There's mega ways to win mega money at Winnebago's Casino Resort. The $350,000 Mega Money Wheel wins every Tuesday and Thursday, where you can win $5,000 instantly. Mega Money concludes on Sunday, June 30th, with the Mega Money Finale, when nine winners can each win $25,000 instantly. It's time to spin to win Mega Money on the $350,000 Mega Money Wheel, only at Puerto Vegas Casino Resort. Things just go right when you have the perfect tan from Sun Tan City, like getting asked out by the lead singer of your favorite band. Your tanning experience will go right, too, thanks to the experts at Sun Tan City. They really get to know you and recommend the right sunbed or spray tan for your skin type and tanning goals. Because when the perfect tan gives you that inner glow, life's a little shinier. Stressing about doggy accidents on your carpets is a thing of the past with Lifeguard waterproof backing from Shop Wars at Novus Carpets. The patented Lifeguard backing system repels stilts so they don't soak through to create odor-causing stains that are hard to remove. If you have pets and kids, be confident your home is clean and fresh with Lifeguard Carpets from Shop Lords at Novus Carpets. Visit Novus Carpets today, Glen Avenue, Sioux City, and online at noviscarpets.com. We all know how important electricity is in our everyday lives. Going without it for even a minute can really make getting things done difficult. Turn to the professionals at Ward Electric for all of your power needs. Charlie Hacker and his team are your trusted source for your next commercial, residential, or industrial project. Charlie brings expertise and over 30 years of experience to your job site. 
They'll help you plan, design, and build the most effective electrical system for your home or business. Call Ward Electric and Sergeant Bluff today. 271-2600. So what does a good time sound like? Does it pack a punch? This is for the UFC Light Heavyweight Belt. Here we go! Or is it off the grid? Four, three, and absolutely no email. Ah, oh, here we go. A good time can sound like just about anything. But there's one sound that goes with a good time every time. Bud Light. Here we go. Please drink responsibly. Bud Light beer and hydro voice in Missouri. At Heartland Chiropractic. You'll find that doctors who really care is so much more than just a slogan. That's because, along with five doctors of chiropractic care, the entire staff is dedicated to the alleviation of pain. Heartland Chiropractic at 711 Two Point Road in Dakota Dunes and 3403 Stinging Hills Boulevard. Look for them in the white and yellow pages of your phone book. Well, welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS, iHeartRadio, and Pluto TV. Our score at the halftime break is Omaha, the Beef, 20, and the Sioux City Bandits score 16 in the first half of this one. We're coming up to the second half. As I mentioned a couple times, Sioux City will get the football to start things off here in the second half of this ball game after electing to kick to start the contest here in this one. So Sioux City will have the football and have an opportunity to take the lead to start things out here in this contest in Ralston Arena. Some great football going on here and uh, a great rivalry adding another chapter into this one. I mentioned in the pregame, this is the 42nd time in uh, each team's history that they have played one another. The season series is Sioux City 21 and Omaha 20, and it's made for tremendous football uh, here tonight once again in Ralston Arena. And I also give props to the Omaha fans for coming out here on a night that they could be spending indoors. Some of these fans probably spent a lot of time at the College World Series during the past few days or so, and we'll probably be there again on Monday. Michigan and Vanderbilt doing battle uh, in the College World Series championship game. I'd cheer for Michigan in that one. Vanderbilt won one a few years ago, so I'd go for Michigan considering they haven't won one in a long time, but that's just me. A lot of Hawkeye fans that I'm listening to might disagree with me, but that's neither here nor there. I also want to give a congratulations to all the Musketeers that got drafted in the NHL draft uh, here tonight, the prominent one being Bobby Brink being taken 34th overall to the Philadelphia Flyers. Marcus, Cal Marcus Callian Kelly, excuse me, goes to the Vegas Golden Knights. And a uh, one, one former uh, Musketeer gets drafted and one future Musketeer, uh, Hader, the new goalie for Sioux City, gets picked up as well in the NHL draft, but he will still play for Sioux City coming up next year. One of their first draft picks actually in the USHL draft ends up going to the NHL draft as well. Nevertheless, back here in the CIF, clock is ticked down here in the halftime break. We'll have 15 minutes on the third quarter clock as the Beef lead by four over the Sioux City Bandits. Again, as I mentioned many times, this is a big game Winner moves on and will take on Salina here in the first round of the CIF postseason. And the loser, well, they are heading home and are done in the CIF this season, which is a shame because no matter how you slice it, a 7-5 and five team will be out of the postseason. And that's the price you have to pay when only four get in. A team with a winning record, I feel like a lot of times should really not be denied a postseason berth, but in this case, it just worked out with the seasoning, I mean, or the, the way the, the schedule turned out and with the way the records fell, you, you look at the CIF all around, you have five teams that ended with a winning record, of course, Texas being a forfeit, but then the other two teams, Oklahoma and Wichita, combined for only four wins, so the wins were spread out 
pretty well, but the losses were pretty well distribute, or distributed to both Oklahoma and Wichita, combining for 20 losses. Or I beg your pardon, Oklahoma is still playing here tonight. They're currently combined for 19 losses, but uh, Oklahoma trailing by two touchdowns currently to the Amarillo Venom. Just interesting how some of those records shaked up. I, I, again, I, I hate to see, whether it's Sioux City or Omaha, I have great respect for both teams. Whether it's either side, I hate to see a 7-5 and five team not make the postseason. But that's the state of the Northern Conference. Both, all three teams that are vying for postseason spots this year have been a phenomenal football team. Both Salina and Omaha and Sioux City, they have been great all year. And like I said, it, it would be just a shame for one of them to miss the postseason, but that's the way football has to go sometimes. So we are finally ready. Both teams have taken the field here at Ralston Arena. As I view it here at the Ralston Arena, Ezekiel Arevalo will kick it from right to left from the beef end zone to the Omaha end zone with C.J. Jones and Frederick Bruno back deep to return for the Bandits. Here we go, 15 minutes on the third quarter clock. 30 minutes left to determine the rest of the season for both squads. Arevalo raises his left hand and sends a high end over end kick taken by Jones, four yards deep in the end zone, far side of the field to the 5'10", and he is met and brought down to the 14-yard line by Trey Dudley-Giles. C.J. Jones comes up on the play absolutely furious, either with himself or with a teammate. Don't know what he's upset about, but he spiked the football afterwards. That kick return is taken to the 14-yard line of Sioux City, right in between the 14 and the 15, I should say. So it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City getting to, needing to get roughly to midfield to get the first down conversion. So the way this game will go out the rest of the way, it looks like. The next score takes the lead. Omaha with the lead currently 20 to 16. But the Bandits with a touchdown can take the lead. Here's Turner on the shotgun. Twins to his right and one to his left. Turner takes the snap, hands it off. Jenkins left side to the 20, breaks free to the 25. Far side, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Sioux City. Bubba Jenkins, 35-yard run into the end zone. Touchdown, Bandits. Bubba Jenkins from 35 yards out, his longest run of his three game season, and it's a big run for Sioux City as they lead the beef 22 to 20. What a way to come out of the second half break by the Bandits, they lead by two points, 22 to 20. Didn't even take, a, a took 31 seconds off of the second half clock. Here comes Greg Condry for the point after try. After Jenkins' 35-yard touchdown run, snap ball down, and the kick is through the uprights and good. 23 to 20, Sioux City leads. 14-29 left in the third. We'll take a break, and we'll come back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Carrier is a full-service transportation intermediary for over-the-road shipping. Three Rivers since 1977 will give you confidence that your shipment will arrive safely, on time, and at a competitive rate. Three Rivers Transportation wants to wish the Sioux City Bandits the best of luck throughout the football season with a host of another championship. See GiveYourLoadsCover.com for all Three Rivers Transportation information. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football. Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. Well, the mood has definitely shifted here for Bandit fans. Coming out of the second half break, Bubba Jenkins breaks one for 35 yards and scores to put the Bandits up 23 to 20. Daniel Versteg with you here on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS and iHeartRadio, along with the video stream courtesy of Pluto TV. And thanks to the Omaha Beef video crew for putting on to the video stream here tonight here in Ralston Arena, doing a phenomenal job from what I can see on the video board. Looks like a fun video to watch. Here comes Greg Conry, he'll send the kick off a slow squib kick, taking a high bounce across midfield, and it'll take a second bounce into the hands of Chris Perry at the goal line. He'll take it up the middle of the field and be dropped by Londell Lee at the 10-yard line. And they'll mark him at the 11, I should say. First and 10 for the Beef at their own 11-yard line on a phenomenal squib kick by Greg Conry, making life difficult for those return men back there trying to take that one. So a great kick by Connery. He gets 
the high fives and the fist bumps as he heads to the bench. And now the Beef will try and answer that big play by Sioux City as they trail for the first time in all game. They have had the lead the first 30 minutes of the ball game and now entering the second 30 minutes. They trail for the first time. Here's Bernard in the shotgun. Twins to his left, takes the snap. He'll hand it off to Calvin Phillips right side. Breaks a tackle of Kenneth Maxwell, but still gains nothing as Brandon Jenkins makes the stop at the 11. The ball came out after the play. And so Omaha will continue to have possession. It'll be second and 10 as C.J. Jones appears slow to get up for Sioux City. He'll have to limp his way off the field, and out comes Derek Fleming who will substitute in for the Clemson product, C.J. Jones. So, now second down and 10 for the Beef after the fumble, it, it looked like went out of bounds. It hit the boards first before into the hands of Brandon Jenkins. So it is gonna be continued to rule a fumble, but Omaha just had it fortunately go off the board. So that's gonna lose him a yard. It'll be second down and 11 for the Beef. Shotgun set for Bernard, twins to his left, one to his right. He'll send two in motion. Bernard drops back to pass on second and 11. Pump fakes, now keeps himself up the middle to the 15-20, far side of the field, breaks a tackle of mine, still on his feet to the 25, and he's finally down on the slide by Bernard at midfield. They're gonna roll him at the 24 of Omaha, but that's a first down for the Beef. A 14-yard carry by Bernard, realized he had nothing downfield on the passing play, and gets the first down with his own two feet instead of with his right arm. 13.05 left in the third quarter, and Sioux City up by a field goal, 23-20 to 20 over the beef. Shotgun set, Bernard twins to the left, one to the right of him in the shotgun. Bernard drops back to pass, looks to throw, fires a deep ball for the end zone, and overthrows his intended target. Julian Stafford and incomplete. And that incompletion will bring up second down and 10 for the Beef. Second and 10 at their own 24 after a long incompletion. He's tried that a few times. Julian Stafford, or excuse me, Der Derek Bernard has tried some long balls downfield multiple times here in this contest, but has never been able to find the right distance. He's always overthrown his target here tonight against the Bandit secondary. Here's second and 10 for Omaha, gotta get across the Sioux City 16. Bernard in the shotgun, twins to his left, one to his right. Bernard drops back, blitz coming up the middle by Mainz. The throw is over the middle of the field and incomplete as the intended target is Donovan Raspberry. Derek Fleming, the substitute D-back on the coverage there for Sioux City. The incompletion brings up third down and 10 for the Omaha Beef. So the Beef, six of eight on third down conversions to this point in the contest. They've been phenomenal on third down. Let's see what they can do here on third and 10. Already here in the second half, trailing by a field goal to Sioux City, 23 to 20. 11.34 left in the third quarter. One thing about Omaha that was good in the first half while they were leading is that they ate up a lot of clock. Now that could be their enemy if they start trailing in this one. Here's Bernard in the shotgun, twins to his left, one to his right. Bernard drops back to pass, blitz coming up the middle by Mainz. He jukes him away, rolls out left and fires to right side, complete to Phillips, to the 10, five, touchdown beef. Calvin Phillips into the end zone from 26 yards out on the pass complete by Derek Bernard. And the beef answer the bandits, it's 26-23, Omaha with the lead with 11-11 left in the third quarter. Well, that was not the play Sioux City wanted on defense, and the Beef eat up three minutes and get the touchdown to make this a three-point game with the point after still to come. So here comes Derek Bernard on to hold for a Ravelo on the point after try. Here's the snap, ball is down, and the kick is up, and it is no good. Wide left, and so our score is indifferentiated by a field goal with 11-11 left in the third quarter. We'll take a break and we'll return to Ralston Arena in 60 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. Feeling when you pull up to a family get-together? A look who's here. You grab a nice cold beer and they fix you a plate of your favorites? Well, that's the same feeling I get at Texas Roadhouse. 
They're famous for their fresh hand-cut steaks, fall off the bone ribs, made from scratch sides in a fun family-like atmosphere. In fact, they tell the folks that the only difference between coming home and going out to Texas Roadhouse is they don't make you clean up and do the dishes. Come on, come join the family at Texas Roadhouse. Bid and win this June at Hard Rock Hotel in Casino Sin City. Get your spin session wheel of cash giveaway. Play with your Rockstar Rewards card at your favorite slot machines and tables during entry. Every Friday and Saturday in June, four lucky winners in each drawing will get to spin the wheel for a cash prize up to $1,000. Spin session wheel of cash all month long. Only at Hard Rock Hotel in Casino Sin City. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, and iHeartRadio. Also, the video stream, a courtesy of Pluto TV. Our score, with 11 minutes and 11 seconds left in the third quarter, is the Beef 26 and the Bandits 23 after Arevalo misses his second point after try. He'll send a kick to the left side off of the boards, and it is go finally going to be ruled down inside the five-yard line. Frederick Bruno was waiting to take it off of the boards there, and our headlines judge finally rules it down at the five-yard line. So Sioux City has a long field out in front of them. They'll have first and ten of their own five. So Sioux City comes out on first and ten after taking the first play from scrimmage of the second half, 35 yards for a touchdown. We'll see if Bubba can do it again. No, Bubba's on the sideline this time. He, they're giving him a break on this possession for when they need him in the fourth. It's a field goal lead for the Beef, 26-23 over Sioux City. Less than, uh, less than 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Turner in the shotgun, trips to his left, sends two in motion. Takes the snap, drops back, fakes the pass, keeps it himself to the 10. Now to the far side, 15-20, still on his feet and shoved into the boards at the 23-yard line. An 18-yard carry by Dylan Turner, and it brings up first and 10 for Sioux City near midfield. An 18-yard carry by Dylan Turner. He's been phenomenal on the ground at this point. Not a whole lot of opportunities, but he makes the most of them. Here's second and 10 for Sioux City at the 23-yard line. Their own 23, I should say. Under center is Turner, single back in the backfield. Twins to his left, go in motion. They're going to hand it off to Bruno, on and on around. Red perfectly. Now he cuts back to the middle and is lucky to lose a yard on the play. It's a loss of a yard to the 22-yard line of Sioux City, and it will now be second down and 11 for the Bandits. Their goal is to get across the Omaha 17-yard line for the first down marker. 9.45 left in the third quarter. Bandits trail by a field goal to the B. Here's second and 11 for Sioux City at their own 22-yard line. Twins to the left, one to the right of Turner and the shotgun. Lee and London go in motion. Turner takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself right side, now cuts up middle of the field to the Omaha Territory 20-yard line. 21 is when they're going to mark him down in Omaha Territory. And it'll be third and a bit more manageable for Sioux City. They'll have about a third and four. So third and four for the Bandits at the Beef 21-yard line. Into Beef Territory, hoping to... Get an opportunity to score six. A field goal ties the ball game, but that's not what the Bandits want to do on this possession. Third and four, Turner under center, single back to the backfield, twins to his right, one to his left. Turner sends two in motion, one on either end, drops back to pass, five steps, fires over the middle, pass complete. Lee, wide open at the 10, breaks a tackle, and he finally goes down, and the Omaha 11-yard line, and it is first and 10 for Sioux City near the red zone. A great job by Coach to Georgia, drawing up a play that left Londell Lee wide open for first down yardage. Now it is first and 10 for Sioux City at the Omaha 12 yard line. Here's Turner under center, making the man in the backfield. Twins to the left, one to the right. Sends Bruno in motion and crosses him over to the left side. Hands it off Macon, right side to the 11, and that's all he's gonna get. A one yard carry by Todd Macon. On the stop there, Harold Willis for the beef. The rookie out of Midwestern State, and it will now be second down and nine for Sioux City at the Omaha 11. 
Just a short completion, eight, or carry, I should say. Eight minutes left here in the third quarter. Beef lead 26-23 over Sioux City. Now Turner has an empty backfield. Four receivers set, two on either end. I believe they're going to motion make it into the backfield, and they will. They're going to keep it himself. Turner right side to the five, cuts into the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown, Sioux City. There is a flag on the play, and I think we got holding. Unfortunately, I think this touchdown is going to come back for Sioux City, and it will. It's holding on the Bandits. They're going to get Matt Ron again for the hold. That will back up the Bandits. Ten more yards from the spot of the foul. Luckily, it was downfield for Sioux City, so they're only going to move back to the – they're going to gain some yardage technically at the 16-yard line. I believe they gained, no, they only, they lost about five on the play. They lost five, so it's second and 15 for Sioux City. Here is Turner now in the shotgun. He'll have twins to his left and one receiver to his right-hand side. They'll motion Bruno to the left to make trips. Turner drops back to pass on second and 15, dumps it off, make it left side to the 15, 10, has a block up ahead to the five, cuts over to the middle, dives into the end zone, and he is in! Touchdown, Sioux City! Todd Macon into the end zone from 16 yards out, and the Bandits retake the lead. 29-26 over the beef with 7-12 left to play into the third quarter. What a completion to Todd Macon, and an unbelievable block downfield by Andre London. Gets the Bandits into the end zone from 16 yards out, and now Connery for the point after try to put him up four. This is a crucial point after. It means they have to score a touchdown to take the lead. A high snap, London gets it down. The ball is up and still good. Connery, automatic on point after tries tonight. 30 to 26, our score. 7-12 left to play into the third quarter of this one. We'll take a break and we'll be back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. The first time you hit the ball, when you beat your personal disaster, that feeling of finally crossing the finish line. Some moments in life are pretty amazing, and so are you. We're here to cheer you on, to coach you forward, to help you do your best so you can achieve any dream or goal. We believe you're worth celebrating. You're what we care about most and why we do what we do. Because people are amazing, and we're here to help keep them that way. Unity Point Health. Know how much you matter to this world. Indoor football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS and iHeartRadio. Also with a video stream on Pluto TV. Our score with 7-12 left in the third quarter is Sioux City 30 and the Omaha Beef 26. Sioux City with a touchdown completion to Todd Macon over the far side of the field on a flat. Got the Bandits into the end zone. Two touchdowns here in the second half for Sioux City. Actually two touchdowns in the first eight minutes of the third quarter after getting into the end zone only twice in the entire first half. So the beef defense has let up a little bit as they trail now by four. They have to score a touchdown to take the lead now where before it was roughly just a field goal. Here's a knuckleballing squib kick. Going to bounce over the boards and into the seats at about the seven-yard line. They're going to mark it down, actually, at the eight. No, they will mark it at the seven. Not too bad for a guy up here in the booth. Now it's first and ten for the Omaha Beef at their own seven-yard line. So the Beef offense, or the human, or the... I should say football equivalent of a rain delay, and they've eaten up so much time of possession here in this ball game, but are still trailing by four. And as, like I said, if they continue to trail in this ball game, that whole lots of time possession is going to kill them in the long run. Here's Bernard in the shotgun. He'll have twins to his right, one to his left. Bernard drops back to pass to the goal line. He's pressured in the backfield, and he'll keep himself up the middle. All day to run to the 20. Midfield breaks a tackle to the 20 and is out of bounds of the Sioux City 15-yard line. Wow, what a carry by Derek Bernard getting the beef. 
just shy of 30 yards, and it'll be first and 10 for Omaha at Sioux City Territory at the 15. Well, when I said about time of possession, I think that's going to eat through my statement just there. 6.23 left in the third quarter. One play gets him 35 yards after. It seemed like most of the game had been six or seven plays got him downfield. Now here's another shotgun set for Bernard. Twins to his right, one to his left. Bernard takes the snap, drops back to pass, and dumps it off left side. Darian Miller, 10-5, breaks a tackle. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Beef, and the Beef back and forth with Sioux City. Retake the lead, 32-30, with 6.01 left in the third quarter. Two plays, and Omaha is into the end zone for six on that drive. Not a whole lot of resistance by the Sioux City defense on that possession. And so now the Beef will have a point after to make it a field goal advantage at 33 to 30. <laughs> Omaha, did not, I don't think they had their long snapper actually. Lots of personnel issues. They have 12 seconds on the play clock. 10 seconds. Gonna have to get a playoff here whether Arevalo is ready or not. They do. Here's the snap, ball is down, laces out, and the kick is no good. Oh, it is good. It just sneaks in the left upright to make it 33 to 30. Omaha with the advantage. 6.01 left in the third. We'll take a break and we'll be back in just a little bit to Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 6.20, KMNS Sioux City. Are you looking for the best video production for your football team? Special events, hockey, dance, volleyball, School concerts, swing choir, these are just a few of the events we do. You name it, we shoot it. Find out more at www.rvplive.tv or by calling 389-1447. RVP Sports Production. AC&R Specialists is your commercial and industrial refrigeration company offering parts, sales, service, and installation services. We offer phenomenal service at a low cost without compromising quality. Our technicians are knowledgeable, trustworthy, and available 24 hours a day. Give us a call with your refrigeration needs today. 712-255-8722. That's 712-255-8722. AC&R Specialists. Sioux refrigeration experts for nearly 40 years. Standard indoor football is on uh, Fox Sports Radio 620 KMN. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S at iHeartRadio. Also video streaming courtesy of Pluto TV. Our score with six minutes left in the third quarter is the beef, 33, and your Sioux City Bandits, 30. Right now, the score of this contest. Winner moves on to the postseason. Can't stress how important this last game of the regular season is for both teams. Each team with one goal, win, beat the other. More importantly, not only just win and get into the postseason, but each team wants to beat the other so badly. As I mentioned, this is a historic indoor football rivalry. Coach Strobing likened it to the Iowa-Iowa State rivalry. And now we have a challenge on the play. Sioux City has challenged the point after try to see if it was actually good or not. Interesting call here. Sioux City has elected to challenge the point after try, right? Regardless of what the call ends up being, Omaha is gonna be kicking a field goal, or kicking a kickoff, I should say. So they are out there and ready to send this one away with the Bandits out ready to return. But they're just getting clarification as to whether that field goal or point after try was actually good or not. Right now, that is up in the air, and that's a Good challenge. It looked like it hooked left, but it was tough to tell from this angle. I get a side view of the upright, of course, and you don't get that straight on view like you normally do when you're watching football or whatever you may be doing. So our officials are gonna check it here. Coach Strobian threw the challenge flag and had a lengthy discussion with the officials that actually lasted most of the media timeout until he finally threw the red challenge flag to see if that point after try was good or not. So our officials, I 
Still checking on the play. It's 33 to 30. Beef with the lead if the point after is no good. That would give the Beef only a two point advantage and would allow the Bandits to take the lead with a field goal. Of course, they don't want to only take the lead with a field goal. They want to they want to take the lead with a touchdown and it looked Ron Franklin, I think, got a peek at the monitor and signaled to the rest of the team that it should be no good. Whether our officials agree or not is another question. Here he comes over the intercom. Oh, so the kick is no good. A great challenge by Coach Strobing and the Sioux City Bandit coaching staff. The official explanation said the ball hit the left upright and so Sioux City was good on their first two challenge our officials confirming that they will get a third one for the rest of the ball game so the explanation from our officials said it hit the left upright and bounced out to make the kick no good and so now it's only a two-point lead for the beef as I mentioned the bandits can pretty much take the lead on anything at this point 32 to 30 our score six minutes left in the third a with a knuckleballing line drive kick off of the hands of Ron Franklin of the 15 he recovers takes it far side of the field and is brought down right at the 15 yard line by Calvin Phillips no gain really on that kickoff return but Ron Franklin saved it from taking a wild bounce that could have gotten over CJ or Frederick's head and so that saves the Bandits a bit of a headache, but they'll start up first and 10 at their own 16 yard line. Sioux City trailing by two, 32 to 30 to the Omaha Beef, and have scored both times here in the second half on two touchdowns. Here's Turner in the shotgun, trips to his right, none to his left. Turner with a man in the backfield, motions one to his left, takes the snap, and hands it off to Jenkins, and Jenkins has to dive forward because he lost his footing, gains two yards on the play to the 18, and it'll be second down and eight now for Sioux City at their own 18-yard line. The Bandits selecting to run there, trying to break up another big play there for Bubba Jenkins. Didn't work, unfortunately, but now they'll have second down and eight, a good first down gain for the Bandit offense. Now trying to do a little more here on second and eight. At the 18 yard line, under center, Jenkins in the backfield, twins to the right of Turner. Turner takes the snap, drops back three steps, fires right side, curl route complete to Lee in Omaha territory at the 20, and he fights the pile forward another couple yards to the 17 yard line. Londell Lee with the completion from Dylan Turner, and it's now first and 10 for Sioux City at the Omaha 17 yard line. A great job by the Bandit offense. The Beef defense has not had their answer in this second half. Now a four receiver set, an empty backfield for Turner. They'll motion Jenkins into the backfield and Turner keeps it himself left side of the 15. Has a block from Bruno and Turner goes head first to the nine yard line. That's an eight yard carry by quarterback Dylan Turner. And it's now second down and two for Sioux City inside the Omaha red zone. 32 to 30 is our score. Omaha with the advantage over the Sioux City Bandits, but the Bandits inside the red zone here on second and two. Got to get across the Omaha seven to convert the first down. Trips to the right of Turner. Bruno the set receiver. Turner in the shotgun. Jenkins to his right. Takes the low snap. Drops back. Now he will keep it himself to the left side, but I think he's got first down yardage to the seven. Now they're going to mark him down at the eight. So that's a one yard gain. And now a big third down and one for Sioux City. Just a one yard gain, now one more yard to go for the first down. Sioux City does not want to have to choose between a field goal for the lead or a fourth down conversion. Here's third and one for the Sioux City Bandits. Trailing by two to Omaha with 323 and counting left in the third quarter. Turner under center, single back in the backfield. Twins to his right. They'll motion Bruno across, fake the end around, hand it off Jenkins left side, cuts up to the middle to the five, still on his feet inside the two, and he's down at the one. Jenkins with a seven yard carry down to the one yard line, and now the goal line stand comes out for Sioux City here on first and goal at the one yard line. A fresh set of downs with only four and a half feet to go. 
They'll bring out their three receiver set, make or three running back set, I should say. Mainz, the fullback, with Jenkins and Macon split backs from right to left. London, the lone receiver to the right side. Turner takes the snap and bobbles it. Ball is loose. And I think Turner got on top of it, but we'll have to wait and see. He ran into his fullback. And we will have second down. Sioux City, Turner just barely dove on top of that in time. They lose three yards on the play, but importantly enough, do not lose possession of the football. With two and a half to go in the third quarter, Sioux City now faces a second and goal at the three. Here come the Bandits now again with that goal line stand. Mainz the fullback, Jenkins, Makins, and Jenkins and Macon are split backs. They'll motion two out of it and pitch it right to Macon. The play is to the right side and Macon is down right back at the line of scrimmage. That is no gain and it'll bring up third down and goal at the three yard line for Sioux City. The beef defense after that botched play on first down has slowed down Sioux City here. Third and goal. The, pits, the Omaha faithful here at Ralston Arena making a whole lot of noise on third down and goal. Turner under center again in that goal line package. They'll motion two backs out of it and fire a screen pass to the right side. London now he'll take it across to the left side and he's going to lose a yacht, lot of yardage on the play. London loses about eight yards to the 11 yard line and now Greg Conry comes out for the field goal to try and retake the lead. So luckily, this field goal is for the lead for Sioux City, but it's going to be a lot tougher than originally anticipated. As Sioux City will have a 26-yard field goal attempt. Wow, every fan for the beef up on their feet here for a 26-yarder from Conry to try and take the lead by one. Snap is good, hold is good, and the kick is tipped. A backhanded block by the Beef, and it goes out of bounds at the back of the end zone. That's the second block kick by Omaha here in the contest, and the Beef will take over with a two-point lead in 45 seconds on the third quarter clock. The Beef kick defend unit has been phenomenal this contest blocking their second kick, and that one was a backhanded block, and it ticked it over to the end zone, and it bounced out of bounds. Thankfully, no return for there for Sioux City. Jermichael Williams was back there for the beef, anticipating a return, and now the Sioux City defense has their work cut out for them. First and 10 for the beef at their own five, up two over Sioux City. If they can stop them here, that block field goal won't matter. Here's a handoff right side Phillips. He takes it to the 10. Judders. Uh, stutter steps to the 15, still on his feet to the 20, and is taken far side to the 24-yard line. A 19-yard carry by Calvin Phillips on the carry for Omaha, and it's now first and 10 for the Beef at their own 24. So a 19-yard carry by Calvin Phillips, and now the Beef take over at their own 24. A great carry, and the clock will run out here in the third quarter. Well, we are through three quarters of play, and the Bandits trail Omaha by a score of 32 to 30. 15 minutes left, potentially, here in the regular season for Sioux City. Whether that means they're done or whether that means we got postseason football left, you'll just have to tune in and find out. We'll be back in a minute to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Kamenas, Sioux City. It's tax season again. All of a sudden, tax professionals start popping up all over the place. You do the smart thing. R.E. Scott is your true professional with expertise and technology to navigate complex tax law. R.E. Scott has served the Siouxland area for decades and have proven their worth with accounting and tax preparation. This year, choose R.E. Scott, the true professionals that will be here every day of the year. Offices on 9th and Grand View at 252-2216 or Transit Avenue at 274-7451. R.E. Scott. Experts working for you. The Sioux Gateway Airport and American Airlines are proud to sponsor your Sioux City Bandits. We would like to thank Sioux City and the surrounding areas for supporting your local airport and American Airlines daily service to Chicago and Dallas-Fort Worth. 
Competitive fares and daily flights have proven to be a winning combination. Many customers have commented on how convenient it is to use the local airport and avoid traveling for hours by car and waiting in long lines at ticket counters or security checkpoints. Remember to fly SUX and check for some great rates the next time you make your airline reservations on American Airlines at www.aa.com. You're listening to Vantage Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMN. Welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS and iHeartRadio. We're through three quarters of football, and we have one quarter remaining. Our score, Omaha 32 and Sioux City 30. The Beef will have the football at their own 24 on first and 10 once we come out of this in-between quarter break. Let's see if I can get you some scores from around the CIF. Some big games going around here in Champions Indoor Football tonight. Amarillo takes on Oklahoma. And right now that score, 76 to 40 in favor of the Venom. And I do believe that that is a final score. Now there's still a little bit of time left in the fourth quarter, but Amarillo going to win that contest. Score in Duke City. Salina trailing Duke City by a score of 22 to 12. That game, 12-35 left in the fourth quarter of that contest in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But here in Omaha, it is 32 to 30. The Beef with the advantage over Sioux City. 15 minutes on the fourth quarter clock. The Beef have the football with a chance to take the lead here. First and 10 at their own 24 yard line. And you gotta think every play here is on the ground. Omaha already threatened that by throwing one to the end zone and Xavier Spann punished them for it with an interception, his sixth of the season. It's been the only turnover really to this point barring some block kicks. Here's a shotgun set, Bernard, twins to his left, motions one to the right side. They'll fake the handoff, Phillips. Bernard keeps it himself, green to run, 20, 15, 10 to the corner, and he's pushed into the end zone for the touchdown. A 26 yard touchdown run by Derek Bernard. Makes this a tougher deficit here, 38 to 30, beef lead with 14.58 left of the first qu fourth quarter, I should say. Derek Bernard into the end zone from 26 yards out. It's an eight point game, but Ezekiel Arevalo known to miss kicks here tonight. He's missed two point after tries, two crucial point after tries as well. This one would put the beef up by two scores should he be able to convert. Here's a snap, hold by Bernard, kick is up and it is this time through the uprights and good. 39-30, beef lead, two seconds taken off the fourth quarter clock. We'll take a break, and we'll be back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Job prospects are looking bleak. Short staff kicks you fading sweet. We've got transportation too. We'll jumpstart your career for you. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS and iHeartRadio. Our score with 14.58 left in the fourth quarter is Omaha 39, Sioux City 30. A 26-yard touchdown run by Derek Bernard after breaking off a 19-yard run by Calvin Phillips on the first play of the drive. Not a whole lot of resistance by Sioux City. That entire drive by the Beef, the entire two plays, I should say. And so that now leaves a nine-point lead for the Beef, 39-30 to 30 over Sioux City. Now the Bandits have to score, hope they score, and force some kind of a turnover if they want a shot at beating the Beef here tonight. Arevalo will send the kickoff from left to right as I view it here at Ralston Arena. Bruno and Jones back deep to return for the Sioux City Bandits. Here comes the kick, a high end over end kick. They're gonna let J Jones return it five yards deep out of the end zone. He stumbles and will take it out of the five yard line. He's down to the five. We got a flag coming out behind the play as Jones, oh, he did something to his leg. I, that's what the stumble was for. He is grabbing that right leg it looks like. There is a flag down on the play. I believe we got a holding on Sioux City, which is just gonna compound them. That's gonna back them up half the distance from the five already. 
So a long drive faces Sioux City, and now they have to deal with one of their kickoff returners out of the contest. C.J. Jones is not getting up. He's lift, trying to lift that right leg. He stumbled his first step out of the end zone and then dove forward to the five, and that's where he ended up tumbling. The Beef and the Bandits taking a knee on the field. And... Omaha will allow Jones to take as much time as he needs there on the turf. He's being held on to by Ron Franklin and one of the trainers for Sioux City, and they're lifting him up off of his back. Still on the turf, though, and Marlon Loban and equipment manager Tony Bandit Payne are going to have to lift CJ off of the field not putting any weight on either leg. Marlon Loban and Bandit Payne are lifting him off the turf and toward the Sioux City bench where he will get some tests done. So the holding penalty will add on and hopefully whatever has hurt CJ is nothing too severe. So half the distance to the goal after that return, it got out to the five yard line. So Sioux City will have first and 10 at their own two and a half yard line. So the Bandits, a lot of field to work, but they got a score on this possession, I would think. Under center, Turner, twins to his left, one to his right, making the man in the backfield. They bobble the snap and fire right side, short pass, incomplete, and in and out of the hands of Fred Bruno. As it falls to the turf, Trey Dudley Giles had a chance of that for an interception. Instead, it'll be second and 10 for Sioux City. So the Bandits get away with one there, a pass that is just slightly overthrown of Frederick Bruno. Instead, it's first and 10 for Sioux City at the two and a half yard line, or second and 10, I beg your pardon. Here's Turner in the shotgun, trips to his left, Macon to his right in the shotgun. Drops back to pass, keeps it himself to the five, up to the 10, bounces off a defender to the 15, and he's down at the 18 yard line of Omaha. First and 10, Sioux City on a 15 yard carry by Dylan Turner. What a carry by Dylan. He's been phenomenal on the ground for Sioux City. Almost as good as he's been with his arm, he's been with his feet. 39 to 30, Sioux City with the lead, with, or Sioux City trailing Omaha, beg your pardon, with 13.35 left in the fourth. Trips to the left of Turner, single back to the backfield. Turner sends two in motion, takes a snap, drops back, screen pass complete to Bruno. He's down in the backfield, but is able to crawl himself up to the 20-yard line. That's a two-yard carry, and it'll be a penalty on the play as well. And I think it's going to be on Sioux City for a hold. That's what it's looking like. The Bandits are backing up, and so Sioux City will lose a few yards on the play. Holding on Sioux City. It's going to back them up to the their own eight-yard line. And it will remain first down. So first and 20 for Sioux City at their own eight-yard line. Again, the penalty is not doing Sioux City any favor here. First and 20 for the Bandits. Got to get across into Omaha territory to get the first down. And now we got a stoppage of play from our officials. With the clock still, no, the clock is stopped. 13.22 to go in the fourth. Sioux City lining up here on the shotgun. And now the clock starts. Trips to the right of Turner. Takes the shotgun snap, drops back to pass towards the end zone. Fires left side for Bruno, and he makes a catch of the 15. Turns around, breaks a tackle, and is down at the 20-yard line. A good comeback play by Sioux City. Gets 12 yards there, and now it's second and about seven for the Sioux City Bandits at their own 20 yard line. The first down marker is the Omaha 22 yard line. And Sioux City has second and eight from their own 20. Turner in the shotgun once again, twins to his right and one to his left. Turner takes the shotgun snap, hands it off Macon, left side, and he's brought down a yard in front of the line of scrimmage, about two yards, and it'll now be third down and six for Sioux City at the Omaha 22. 39-30, beef with the lead, 12-30 to go in the fourth quarter. Sioux City trying to get the final win of the regular season and to hope to move on to the postseason. They cannot do so, their season is over right here 
and right now at the hands of the Omaha Bee. 12-13 left to play in the fourth. Third and six for Sioux City. Turner in the shotgun. And have twins to his right, one to his left. We've got a whistle. Stoppage of play. And it is for an official timeout. And that's going to stop play here. It's going to officially stop play. They're going to check, I think, of some spot issues or maybe some issues with the turf. I don't know what they're, they're pointing at something around midfield and they're motioning for the Omaha coaching staff to come have a look at it. Potentially some kind of issue with the turf. I don't know what could be on the field. Right now it is third and six for Sioux City at their own 22 and the officials are having a look at something that is near midfield on the turf. They're actually gonna have the some water sprayed on the turf. I don't really know what's the issue with the field right now. They're just spraying water onto the turf from two Gatorade water bottles on one particular spot of the Omaha Beef logo. I, they're having a good chuckle. I don't know what the water is for. But nevertheless, head coach of the Omaha Beef, Marvin Jones, is complying, and now they're having a towel guy dry it off, potentially some kind of spot that they wanted to get cleaned out of the turf. So a bit of carpet cleaning, if you want to call it that. And now the official timeout will end as Sioux City has third and six at their own 22 with 12.08 left in the fourth quarter. And the Bandits trailing by nine to the Omaha Beef. 39 to 30 is our score. Each team with three timeouts remaining here in the ball game. Shotgun set for Turner on third and six. Twins to his right, one to his left. Turner takes the shotgun snap, drops back to pass on third and six, fires right side in that pass thrown just wide of Frederick Bruno and incomplete. And now a fourth and six as Greg Connery leaps his way over the boards. And will come out for a field goal attempt. So Sioux City trying to settle for at least something here on this possession. They've got a field goal coming up here and this will be no cakewalk for Greg Connery. This will be a 43 yarder which will tie his season long if he can convert. A 43-yarder, Chris Perry is back near the goalpost to return this one should he be needed. It's 11.22 left to go on the fourth, and we got a timeout. Stoppage of play as the padding came off of the door in front of the Sioux City Bandit bench. I believe their door is not shutting right now. Now it's good. Now here comes a field goal kick. No, they're going to pitch it to Connery. Connery's going to try and run with it, and he's down. They tried a fake field goal with Greg Connery. They're going to stop him in the backfield, and it's a turnover on downs for Sioux City. A fake field goal play gets nothing, and now the Omaha Beef come out on offense. They snapped it directly to the holder, Andre London, and pitched it to Greg Connery who tried to run with it outside to the right side of the field and the beef read it perfectly and were able to make the stop. So the miscue on fourth down, a nine point lead for the beef with 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter and the beef take over inside Sioux City territory at the 18 yard line. Boy, that was unfortunately not the play for Sioux City as they'll have first and 10 at the Sioux City 18 for Omaha. Twins to the right of Bernard in the shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off up the middle. Miller to the 15-10, far side of the field, five, and he's knocked into the end zone for a touchdown. Darian Miller, 18 yards, and the Beef now lead 45-30 over Sioux City. The Beef have opened this one up with 10.41 left to play in the fourth quarter, and things are looking bleak for Sioux City here tonight. 45 to 30 is our score, and the point after try comes out for the beef with 10.41 left to play 
here in the fourth quarter of this ball game. Ezekiel Arevalo has missed two, but we'll have a point after trying to make it a 16 point ball game with 10.41 left to play. Bernard to hold, it's a low snap that bounces to him. The snap and the kick is good. Point after try is good, it is 46 to 30. The beef with the lead over Sioux City. We'll take a break and we'll return to Ralston Arena in 30 seconds. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, Sioux City. My favorite part about working with Deeper Triant Toes is the people, whether it's management or the hourly person. I would recommend anyone to apply to Deeper Triant Toes just to try the different opportunities and roles out there. Deeper are the heart of the whole entire company, really. People are looking for a good job, great pay, good benefits. Everything that I've learned here is what I've learned here. I didn't have any experience prior to coming here. Apply today at SiouxCitySports.com. From time to time, you just want something different, like a new car or a new car buying experience. Experience the Sioux City Ford Lincoln City, like the lowest price, clearly marked on every vehicle. Our friendly, non-traditional staff makes it possible. We put you first. Make auto buying a relaxed and enjoyable experience. We are a team of people who understand the value of being a group. Partner by giving back to the community we serve. Come into Sioux City Ford Lincoln and experience the difference. Or visit us online at SiouxCityFord.com. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Dana Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS, iHeart Radio, and video streaming on Pluto TV. Our score with 10 minutes and 41 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Omaha 46, Sioux City 30. Lots of ground to make up, but in the grand scheme of things, if all goes according to plan, this is only a two-score game. Sioux City can only tie it, but they can do it in two possessions. Need to convert on two-point conversions, though. That would be the only way they can do it. Here comes Ezekiel Arevalo for the kickoff for the Omaha Beef. And Sioux City has got to be able to return this one. Ron Franklin and Fred Bruno back deep to return for Sioux City at the goal line. 10.41 left to play. Sioux City trying to save their season here against the Beef, trailing by 16. They'll send a kick over the boards and into the seats. And Sioux City will start at midfield. Ezekiel Arevalo with a shanked kick into the seats on the fly, and Sioux City starts at midfield. Well, that's one thing that can help the Bandits. They get it right at midfield and have only half the field to go. That will definitely help Sioux City to start this one here on offense. Bubba Jenkins out there in the backfield and the usual suspects at wide receiver, Andre London, Londell Lee, and Frederick Bruno. So they'll start at midfield. Got a score and preferably got a score quickly. Here's Sioux City, first and 10 at midfield. They're gonna set up a play to the left side. Twins to the left, one to the right. And shotgun set for Turner. They'll motion Bruno to the left side to make trips. Turner drops back to pass, fires over the middle. It's caught by London to the 15-10. Has some room to run and gets a first down and goal at the eight yard line. Andre London gains 17 yards on the completion and Sioux City has first and goal inside the red zone. Don't count out this Sioux City team yet. 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, trailing by 16, 46 to 30. The beef with the lead, Sioux City first and goal at the nine. Turner in the shotgun, twins to the left and one to the right. Turner takes a shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, keeps himself up the middle to the five, bulldozes a defender to the five yard line. Good carry there on the stop, also made by Desmond Reed. And it's now second and goal at the Omaha five. Sioux City on second and goal. Trying to punch it into the end zone for six and get a two-point conversion to follow. A 16-point lead for the Beef, 46 to 30. Here comes Sioux City, second and goal. Nobody in the backfield. Empty backfield for Turner. Twins to his left and right. Turner drops back to pass on second and goal. We got a flag on the play. And we'll see who it is on. The anticipation will build. This could 
push Sioux City half the distance to the goal. Depends what the call is, though, and who it's on, of course. I believe this is going to back up Sioux City, though. I think we're going to get false start. I did not see any movement. But, no, it's a snap infraction. That's a five-yard penalty, and now it's second and goal for Sioux City at their own, or at the Omaha 10, I should say. So it's only a five-yard penalty. Gives them a bit more breathing room to work with on second and goal. Another four-receiver set. Turner, the lone man in the backfield, but they'll allow Bubba Jenkins to motion probably into the backfield. Turner takes the snap, keeps it himself, finds a hole to run through, and only gets about two yards on the play. To the eight-and-a-half-yard line, Turner gets about two. And now it's third and goal for Sioux City. What looked like a good start to the drive has changed for Sioux City right now. They have third and goal from nine yards out. Sioux City trailing by 16 with 8.37 left in the fourth. Shotgun set, four receivers. Turner drops back to pass, looks for the end zone, pump fakes to his left, looks to his right, lob ball for the end zone, and it's incomplete. Intended target, Londell Lee, tip pass by Chris Perry. And I believe Sioux City is in four down territory, and they are. Sioux City, fourth and goal coming up from the nine yard line of Omaha. So it's a big fourth down. I think if they convert this one, we're still, a, a conversion is a touchdown. If they don't convert, I find it hard to believe Sioux City comes back in this one. Shotgun for Turner, twins to his left, one to his right. Turner takes the snap on fourth and goal, drops back to pass, looks for the end zone, keeps it himself to the 10, throws one in, touchdown Sioux City! In the back of the end zone, Londell Lee makes the catch for six. And the Bandits score on another touchdown catch by Londell Lee to make it 46-36. Boy, this Bandit team, just when you think they're out of it, they come right back and give themselves a chance. Here with 7.48 left in the fourth quarter. And now a two-point conversion to try and keep this a one-score game. This is... Also a big play for Sioux City. Coach to Georgia tries to get the last second instructions. They only have eight seconds. Got to get to the line of scrimmage. Five seconds, and they're going to elect to use a timeout, I believe. They're going to call a timeout here. Timeout call just before the delay of game comes. Sioux City has to burn a timeout, unfortunately. With 7.48 left in the four. So Sioux City uses their first. It's 46-36 with a two-point conversion coming up. We'll take a break and we'll return in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620. Cam and S, Sioux City. 30 seconds, 30. With your Rockstar Reward Card at your favorite slot machine, then tables to earn entry. Every Friday and Saturday in June, four lucky winners in each drawing will get to spin the wheel for a cash prize up to $1,000. Spin sessions, meal of cash, all month long, only at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Sioux City. Branded indoor football is done. Fox Sports Radio 620 KM. Well, welcome back to Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S and iHeartRadio. The Bandits have a two-point conversion to cut it from a 10-point game to an eight-point game, 46-36. And a two-point conversion keeps it a one-score game. If not, we're back to a two-score game. They got to get this two-point conversion. Shotgun set for Turner, twins to his left. One goes in motion, Turner. Hands it off Jenkins, hands it back to London, pitches it to Bruno, takes it left side to the five, breaks off a tackler, and he's down in side the two. He's down out of bounds, and the two-point conversion no good. Two handoffs and a pitch was what Sioux City tried to get away with there. Instead, it ended up, I think, being a bit too much of a jumble, and... Now it's a 10-point lead for the B, 46-36, 7.48 left in the fourth quarter as Sioux City tries to put the pieces back together. Need now two stops if you want to have a shot at any game right now because it is a 10-point game. I believe we do have a final, Amarillo and Oklahoma. 
final score, Venom beat the Flying Aces 76 to 40. And right now, Duke City looking to beat Salina 42 to 26 with a minute 21 left in the fourth quarter in Albuquerque. So that's how that game's going, meaning uh, more than likely whoever comes out of this game will be tied with Salina for first place, but Salina gets the home field advantage no matter what. Our score, 46-36, Omaha with the lead, 7.48 to play in the fourth quarter of this one. Sioux City needs two stops, and real in realistic terms, they really need two touchdowns as well. I don't see a scenario Sioux City ties the game and is still in it. They, I think they have to take the lead if they're going to get two stops. So some big defensive plays coming up for the Bandit defense. And the Beef going to try and use that time of possession to their advantage and eat up as much clock as they can here in the fourth quarter. That is the goal right now with the Beef. And luckily what I said earlier for them has not been an issue. Now an onside kick coming up from Greg Connery. And they're not hiding the fact only three Beef players over to that right side of the field, left for them. They'll send the onside kick to the 10, and Lee recovers it! Londell Lee recovers at the 15-yard line, and Sioux City takes over after the onside kick. It bounced directly over the Omaha Special Teams Unit and right into the hands of Londell Lee, and Sioux City will take over at the 15-yard line. Hold everything, folks. This game is not over yet. Greg Connery could not have kicked a better onside kick. There is no way they recover that football without the incredible bounce that Greg got on the onside kick. And Lee, wide open for recovering that onside kick. And Sioux City has it first and 10 at their own 16. Hang on, Bandit fans. We're in for a good finish here. The onside kick recover. Bandits trail by 10. 46-36, and now need another score to try and answer. Here comes a shotgun set for Turner, trips to his left. Turner takes the snap, drops back to pass on first and 10, fires one over the middle, and that pass is incomplete to Londell Lee. Down the middle of the field into Omaha territory, and now it's second and 10 for Sioux City. With 7-12 left to play in the fourth, Sioux City trailing by 10, 46 to 36. Two timeouts left for the Bandits, three for the Beef, as we trek under seven minutes in the fourth quarter. 46-36, Beef lead, shotgun set, Turner making in the backfield, twins to his left. Turner drops back to pass, on second and 10, fires right side, and that pass is caught at midfield, and I believe he's got first down yardage. Yes, he does. To the Omaha 24-yard line, Frederick Bruno makes the catch for first down yardage. And Sioux City will take over in Omaha territory. So the man that's going to make first down. First and 10 for Sioux City. Need to score here. Shotgun for Turner. Trips to his left-hand side. None to his right. Making in the backfield. Turner takes the snap. Drops back to pass on first and 10. Fires over the middle. That pass tipped up in the air. And incomplete. Andre London. Tried to tip it to himself, almost hung on, but instead it falls to the turf incomplete. And it will now be second down and 10 for Sioux City. Unbelievable, Sioux City almost had another first down and then some, but London un unable to hang on to the catch with one hand. Now here's second and 10, a four receiver set, empty backfield, Turner takes a shotgun snap. Keeps it himself up the middle. Now cuts up to the left side to the 23, and we got a flag on the play. And I have a bad feeling that this one is coming back on to Sioux City. But we'll have to await and see. See what the call is first. It's a one-yard carry by Turner. And it's a legal formation on the Sioux City offense. So that'll back them up five yards to their own 21-yard line. It'll repeat second down, and now it's second and 15 for Sioux City at their own 21. The first down marker is the Omaha 14. 46 to 36, Beef with the lead over the Bandits. Bandits with 540 left in the fourth quarter. Here comes Sioux City on second and 15. Shotgun set for Turner, once again a four receiver set. 
Aiken will go in motion, and they'll motion him as a wide receiver. Turner drops back to pass. Three-man rush. Steps up in the pocket. Now comes to his right, and he is stopped. Right back at the line of scrimmage. Robert Cuba with the stop for Omaha for no gain, and it's now third and 15 for Sioux City. So the Bandits have a third and 15. A big time, a third down for Sioux City with five minutes left in the fourth quarter. At their own 21-yard line. If you can hear yourself think, boy, you're doing better than me tonight. Here's third and 15 at their, their own 21-yard line. Sioux City, shotgun set for Turner. They'll have a four-receiver set with Bruno and Lee going in motion, making a set receiver to the right side. Turner drops back to pass on third and 15. Heaves one out deep downfield, and Frederick Bruno makes the catch in the end zone. Did he hang on? He did! Touchdown, Sioux City! Touchdown, Bandits! It's 46-42! Hold everything, Bandit fans. This one is not over yet. 4.33 left in the fourth, and the Beef have a four-point lead over Sioux City. 46-42, and unfortunately on the play, a Beef player is down. A Beef player is down in the end zone. Unfortunately, lots of collision on that play, and a Beef player still slow to get up. That looks to be Taylor Hawkins. That is Incredibly unfortunate. That was a heck of a play downfield by the Beef defense and an even better play by Frederick Bruno on the catch. And Hawkins, great to see him come up under his own power and he'll walk off the turf. He'll jog off the turf. That is great to see. It looked bleak there for a second with him not getting up. Instead, he'll jog off the turf and make his way to the bench. Great to see. And now a point after try for Sioux City to make it a field goal game. 46-42. And Omaha is going to challenge the ruling of a touchdown on the play. I think they're going to try and see if it fell to the turf incomplete. Now, Sioux City did a good job of their challenges in that there was some pretty clear camera angles. Now here's the thing, the catch was made near the boards and I don't know if there's any camera angle that could have been seen to see that close towards the boards. Because they shoved Bruno up into the boards with about four other players and that covered up the football and Bruno just came out of the pile with it. And so you have to get on the touchdown at that point unless there's one definitive shot that shows a football in another player's hands or on the turf, I don't see them challenging him. They came out really quickly, and that's not a good sign if you're a Beef fan, I don't think. So here comes our official out of the headset. And it's a touchdown. They're going to stand the call. And, yeah, I did not think they had any angle on it. 46 to 42, Omaha with the lead. So Omaha also uses a timeout on that with the missed challenge. 433 left in the fourth, and now Greg Connery comes out for the point after try. 46 to 42, 433 left in the fourth. If a point after is good here, that's 13 unanswered points by Sioux City. Here's London, on to hold for Connery. Snap, ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. It's a field goal game once again, 46-43, with four and a half left to play. Don't go anywhere, Bandit fans. From 16 down to three down, your Bandits are still in it. We'll be back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. Ultimate Fitness is proud to be the official fitness center of the Sioux City Bandits. We have three great 24-hour locations in Sioux City, Sergeant Bluff, and Beersburg. Ultimate Fitness offers unlimited tanning, personal training, boot camp, taekwondo, kickboxing, yoga, saunas, massage therapy, and more. Come and see why we are Siouxland's number one 24-hour fitness center. Stop it and visit our newly expanded location under Science and Nutrition off 19th and Hamilton. Check out our website at ultimatefitness24hour.com. That's ultimatefitness24hour.com. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football. 
on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. And welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. I mentioned something about seven game minutes ago that said things are looking bleak for Sioux City. Well, it's as if they flipped the switch. Things are looking much better now for the Bandits. They only trail the beef 46 to 43 with four minutes and 33 seconds left to play in this fourth quarter. This is a wide open ball game once again. The Bandits were down 16 about seven game minutes ago. With 11 minutes to go, they were down 16. And now they're down three, 46 to 43 to the Omaha Beef. And now another onside kick comes up and the Beef smartly stack that side. Only one left to the right side with six to the left and one back deep for the Beef should they need him. So this will be much tougher for the Bandits to recover. They send it to the left side and they're gonna make the Beef return it. Here comes Miller to the 5, 10, 15, up the middle of the field to the 22. And that's a good job by the Bandits. They deke the onside kick. And it'll be first and 10 for the Beef at their own 21. All right, a stop or a field goal is what the Bandits can afford here. There's not a whole lot of in between. A touchdown really makes things difficult here with 425 left in the fourth quarter. First and 10 for Omaha at their own 21 yard line. So here comes the beef to the line of scrimmage. They have to get to the Sioux City 19 for the first down. Shotgun set for Bernard, trips to the right. They're gonna motion one to the left side, that's Stafford. Bernard takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it left side across midfield to the 20, into Sioux City territory, 15 out of bounds at the 12. Bernard down to the red zone at the 11 yard line. And it'll be first down and 10 for the beef right by the red zone. A great job, Derek Bernard has had all kinds of room to run this entire contest with 3.50 left in the fourth quarter. It'll be first and 10 for the beef at the Sioux City 11. So now the Bandits could potentially afford a quick touchdown, but they have to answer with a quick touchdown of their own to put them right back into it. That'd be the only way they could allow a touchdown here 3.28 left in the fourth. Twins to the right of Bernard under center. Takes the snap, hands it off up the middle. Miller stopped for a loss of yardage. Zach Slugger on the stop. They're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage, they'll say. Zach Slugger on the stop for Sioux City, and it'll be second and 10 for the beef at the Sioux City 11. They're going to make him lose about a foot, if even that. And so it'll be second and 10 with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Now the Bandits, I feel like, are in turnover range. They have to stop this drive before they eat up more clock, and Omaha realizes that. They're gonna eat up as much time as they can off of this clock to 2.45, less than 10 seconds on the play clock. Derek Bernard under center, twins to his right. Now he'll snap it with four seconds on the play clock, pitches it right for Miller, and Miller gets five hard-earned yards to the six-yard line. Slugger again on the stop for Sioux City. And now it's third and five for the beef at the Sioux City six. So the Bandits trying to slow them down here. Force a fourth down, that would be great right now. 2.20 left in the fourth, and Omaha can snap it inside two minutes to play. Beef offense, not hurrying anything right now, and that's the smartest thing you can do right now as the beef offense. A three-point lead for Omaha, 46-43, as we tick to two minutes left in the fourth. Shotgun here for Bernard, twins to his left, one to his right. With three seconds on the play clock, he'll snap it, fake the handoff, fire right side, and that pass complete for a touchdown. Touchdown beef, Julian Stafford just inside the goal line for six points. And the Beef now lead it 52-43 with a minute 49 left to play. A big touchdown for Omaha. And now Kenneth Maxwell and Julian Stafford getting into it after the play. Both teams doing a good job of separating those two before things got ugly. Julian Stafford playing his first game as a Beef football player and gets his first touchdown as well. Here comes Ezekiel Arevalo for the point after to make it a 10-point ball game. 
53-43 is what they're trying to get here. With a minute 49 left of the fourth, high snap, ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is through the uprights and good. 53-43, back to a 10-point game for the beef. We'll be back in 30 seconds to Ralston Arena. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, Sioux City. You need to come see the 2019 Subaru Outback at Justin Subaru. It comes with road-gripping standard symmetrical all-wheel drive plus 32 miles per gallon. It helps keep your journey safe with standard eyesight driver assist technology for an extra set of eyes on the road. And right now at Jensen Subaru, the Outback starts as low as 26345 with as low as 0% APR. Jensen Subaru is at 3909 Stadium Drive in Sioux City. Pricing does not include destination, delivery, tax title, and license. APR offer is with approved credit. Welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Dan Overstag with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, iHeart Radio, and video streaming on Pluto TV. One minute, 49 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and the Omaha Beef lead the Sioux City Bandits 53 to 43. I'm not going to say anything about the scenario right now because it flipped very quickly there for a minute. But now it is back to desperation territory for Sioux City. A 53-43 advantage. Sioux City needs to score and they need to score quick. Probably on a kickoff. Now would be a good time for a kick return touchdown. A high end over end kick and Arevalo sends it out of the back of the end zone. A great kick by Ezekiel Arevalo. Out of the back of the end zone and it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City at their own five. With a minute 45 left to play for the rest of the regular, or for the rest of the season for Sioux City. If they cannot put up 10 or more points, this season is over right here. And if they can, well, we might continue. All right, I should beg, beg my pardon here. The Bandits are gonna start first and 10 at midfield as that did clear the back of the end zone with no hop. So Sioux City, instead of having a touchback, they'll start first and 10 at midfield. So here's Turner in the shotgun. He'll have a four or three receiver set, twins to the right, one to the left. And we got a stoppage of play from our official with a minute 28 left of the fourth quarter. And the ball's got to be spotted on the left hash mark instead. It was spotted on the right hash mark. Now it's spotted at the left hash mark. Shotgun here for Turner. Twins to the right, one to the left, a minute 27 and counting left of the fourth. Now they'll motion Jenkins out of the backfield, low snap taken by Turner, drops back to pass, fires for the end zone, left side, and it is incomplete. Intended target, Frederick Bruno, left side of the field, and the clock will tick down to the one minute warning with a minute 12 left in the fourth. 53-43, Sioux City trails Omaha here in this final game of the regular season. And the clock ticks down to the 60 second warning. 60 second warning, second and 10 coming up for Sioux City out of this one minute warning. And we'll take this time to check up on scores from around the CIF here tonight. The last, or the next to last one to go final, Amarillo beat Oklahoma 46 to, or 76 to 40, I beg your pardon there. 76 to 40, Amarillo beat Oklahoma. And a final score, Duke City beats Salina 43 to 26. That's a final score. So Duke City finishes with the best record in the CIF once again, nine and three. And Salina will be eight and four, tied with whoever comes out of this ball game. Right now looking like the beef. With a minute left in the fourth quarter, Sioux City's got a score, I think, on this play. And try for some kind of wacky scenario to get them the football back. There is. Boy, I don't see it really a whole lot of scenarios that don't involve either a two-point conversion and an onside kick. Or What really revolves around Sioux City getting back in this one is an onside kick recovery. So here's second and 10 for Sioux City out of the one-minute timeout. Shotgun for Turner, trips to the right-hand side. He takes the snap, drops back to pass. He's looking for the end zone. No, he'll dump it off to Jenkins at midfield, near side of the 20, gets out of bounds at the 14-yard line and gets the first down marker. So it stops the clock with 54 seconds on the fourth quarter clock inside the 15. It'll be first and 10 for Sioux City at the beef 14-yard line. 
So the clock stops here for this play. It'll start it once again once the play starts. First and 10 for Sioux City at the Omaha 14-yard line. As the ball got stepped on by the defensive lineman backing up. So here's first and 10 for Sioux City. Turner under center, twins to the right, one to the left. Turner takes the snap, drops back to pass, looks for the end zone, fires left side. That pass tipped up in the air and incomplete. It was tipped from the five all the way back to the 15, and Harold Willis almost had the interception for the beef that would have won it for them. So here is now second and 10 for Sioux City at the 14-yard line. Second and 10 for the Bandits at the Omaha 14. Here's Turner in the shotgun, who have twins to his right, one to his left. On second and 10, 48 seconds left to play in the four. Turner sends two in motion, takes the snap, drops back to pass, looks, pressure's coming, he rolls out right, and he's gonna be dropped at the 12 yard line on a two yard carry. And a timeout will be called immediately by Sioux City as the clock ticks down to 37 seconds. 53-43, Sioux City with the advantage, no, with the disadvantage against the beef, beg your pardon. Bandits trying to get another three seconds on the clock. They're gonna use their second charge timeout of the half. And the clock will be reset to 40 seconds here in the fourth quarter. So 53-43, beef still with the lead, 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. A two-yard gain, it'll be third and eight for Sioux City out of their second charge timeout. Now you have to score, I think. You, you, man, trying to go over the scenarios in my head right now. The down marker, if you're watching on Pluto TV, the down marker is currently incorrect. The scoreboard has it correct, but the physical down marker has it wrong. It's third and eight for Sioux City at the Omaha 12. A 10-point lead for the B. And a shotgun set coming here for Dylan Turner. A four receiver set, twins on either end, and we got a stoppage of play before this snap. No, nope, it looks to appear we are good. So Turner in the shotgun, sends two in motion, takes the snap, drops back to pass on a third and eight, rolls out to his right, breaks a sack, fires for the end zone, and that pass incomplete. It's tipped away by Taylor Hawkins to the turf. And now it is fourth down and eight for Sioux City at the Omaha 12. So another timeout called by Sioux City. No, we've got a, just a regular stoppage of play with the incompletion. But now the field goal unit comes out for Sioux City. Clock was stopped here already, no timeout called. Oh, wait a minute, they, they've got the down all wrong right now. It's currently fourth down for Sioux City. It's supposed to be fourth down for Sioux City. They had the down marker all wrong. The scoreboards have it right, but the down marker had it wrong. He started the play, or he started that drive with a second down. So it is fourth down for Sioux City, fourth and eight. The Omaha offense came onto the field, but they should be, the Sioux City offense should be coming back out here. They're gonna make sure it was fourth down. It, it should be fourth down for Sioux City. They gave a turnover on downs for the beef. And so right now it's first and 10 for Omaha. Moy, my, my goodness. What happened was the down marker did not change it to first down after Sioux City converted initially to give themselves first down and so left it second down and the Bandits only got three downs. And so right now they're confirming whether or not it should be fourth down and it should. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The scoreboard has it fourth down. Everybody in the building knows it's fourth down. The only people that don't are the people on the field. It is fourth down and eight for Sioux City. And if it's anything different, boy, we are going to have 
a real scenario here. That's all I will say. I don't. Uh, the Bandits are going to be not happy, even though they were fooled as well. It should be fourth down. Should be fourth down for the Bandits. Omaha's defense has to go back onto the bench. And the fact that it is taking this much time is absolutely unbelievable. I, the problem was, and this might come back to bite the Bandits in the end, on the first play, it appeared that the down marker was behind, or the line of scrimmage marker was behind the initial starting point of the possession, or the initial starting point of the downs. It should be fourth down and eight for Sioux City. And this play under review for the Bandits. As a let's go beef chant comes out for the Omaha faithful. The problem, as I've said a couple times, the down marker was labeled incorrectly to start this first down. Our officials are checking, though, to make sure. And they should know only three plays were played from that first down. Our scoreboard has it right. Our scoreboards all around the building have it correct. Everybody besides the ones on the field knows it's fourth down right now. It's fourth and eight for Sioux City. And the officials are checking the replay monitor. They want to make sure this is right. I give them credit for that. They want to make sure they have the right call, but to everybody besides the ones on the field, it is correct. But our officials have a tough, it's not a tough call, but it is a tough scenario for them. Our officials still under the headset as they try and make sense of what is going on here on the field. Right now the clock has stopped at 33 seconds. It's a 10 point lead for the beef at 53 to 43. Our officials checking to make sure they've got fourth and eight for Sioux City. And our, our three officials are conversing. Our lines judge and our umpire are staying away from the discussion. Right now the headlines judge and the field, the, the field judge is, are conversing with the referee. And everybody on the field is kind of in a state of confusion right now. Here comes our official. He's going to make the right call, hopefully. Yep, good. Fourth and eight for Sioux City. They'll have the ball at the Omaha 12-yard line with another opportunity. So yeah, they got it straightened out, thank goodness. Otherwise, I think a riot would ensue. Fourth down and eight for Sioux City at the Omaha 12. 33 seconds left in the fourth. One timeout for Sioux City. Two timeouts for the Beef, who lead by 10. Here's trips to the right of Turner in the shotgun. This will be the last play on offense for Sioux City. They can't get a first down without scoring, but they're gonna try and score on this play regardless. Here's fourth and eight. Turner in the shotgun, trips to his right, takes the snap, fakes the pass, now keeps himself to the five, right side to the two, he's into the end zone! Touchdown Sioux City! Turner into the end zone for six! And the Bandits cut it to four. That's what they needed. They take seven seconds off the fourth quarter clock, 26 left in the ball game, and it is 53 49 Omaha with the lead over Sioux City who has one timeout remaining. So the Bandits have scored. They get the touchdown from Dylan Turner from 12 yards out on the ground. And now Greg Connery has a point after trying to make this a three point game. Here's Connery, he's only missed one tonight. Snap, the hold, the kick is up and the kick is straight through the uprights and good. 53-50, Sioux City trails by a field goal with 26 seconds left in the fourth quarter. We'll have an onside kick coming up in 30 seconds in Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio, 620 KMS, Sioux City.
What's that sound? That's the sound of Hy-Vee delivering groceries to your front door. Or, if picking them up at the store sounds better to you, we'll bring them right to your car. With Hy-Vee Isles Online, you can order anything from the comfort of your couch. And let us do the grocery shopping for you. Sound good? Then you'll love the sound of this. It's free with a minimum $100 order. Save time, shop online. Try HyveeIslesOnline.com today. Well, welcome back to Ralston Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, iHeart Radio, and video streaming on Pluto TV. Our score, the scenario, 26 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Omaha Beef lead your Sioux City Bandits 53 to 50, and the winner of this ball game moves on in the postseason. The loser season is done. Sioux City has one timeout remaining, and the Beef have two, and the Bandits will be kicking off to the Beef here on this play. So Sioux City has one opportunity. It'll more than, it, there's no doubt in my mind this is an onside kick coming from the side of Sioux City. So Connery will try and put one smack dab into the hands of a bandit returner. The season hangs on this onside kick for Greg Connery. Seven bandits lined up to his right for the onside kick. He'll kick it to the left side. It doesn't go 10 yards, and the Beef have it and get into the end zone. Touchdown, Omaha. Touchdown, Beef. It's 59 to 50 with 21 seconds left in the fourth. It was kicked to the left side in hopes that Fred Bruno would recover it 10 yards in front of the kickoff. But instead, Omaha recovers, and there's a flag after the play. But I don't think it's going to matter. Touchdown, Omaha, 59-50 beef lead with 21 seconds left of the fourth after they recover the onside kick in the end zone for six. And the beef bench are going to pick up an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So it's a 15-yard penalty on the unsportsmanlike, and it should be assessed after a kickoff. It's 59 to 50, Beef lead the Bandits. And now a point after try coming up for Omaha. Actually, that's gonna back up the Omaha point after try 15 yards. So that's not gonna benefit the Bandits a whole lot. So the Beef are going to have to kick a very long point after try from about midfield. So this will be a 32, 33 yard field goal for a point after try, basically. This will be roughly an NFL point after, basically. To make it a 10-point game, 59-50 with 21 seconds on the fourth. Here's the snap, the ball is down, and the kick is up, and it's good. It is good, 60-50, to 50, Omaha leads, but Sioux City gets the football back. It's a lot tougher to get back into the game, but it is still possible, but 21 seconds left in the fourth. Sioux City would have to score probably right away on the kickoff return if they want any shot. So we're going to keep it here for the final bit of the contest. 21 seconds left of the fourth. Omaha leads Sioux City 60 to 50. And a kickoff coming from the Beef Special Teams Unit to try and win this ball game. If Sioux City can score and somehow give themselves another opportunity at an onside kick, they might have a chance at winning. So they're showing the replay here. It took an awkward bounce, and it was Jermichael Williams that took the kickoff right into the end zone with no real issue. It took a bounce at the six and bounced backwards, and that was not the way Greg wanted that kickoff to go. So now Sioux City has a kickoff return coming up with 21 seconds left in the fourth. 60 to 50, Omaha with the lead over Sioux City. With two timeouts left for Omaha, one timeout for the Bandits, which they're gonna have to use sparingly if they want any shot at a contest here. 
Lots of scoring here in this fourth quarter. Bannis just trying to get out of here as a playoff team. Here we go. Arevalo sends a low end over end kick taken by Bruno at the one yard line. Far side of the field to the 10, 15, splits through the blockers to the 20, and he's down at the 23. Takes off six seconds off the fourth quarter clock, and the Bandits will have it first and 10 at the 23. There is a flag on the play all the way back at the start of the kickoff, and it might be on and off sides for Omaha. We will have to see. That might. It is. That's going to move the Bandits up a little bit. So it's a 10-yard penalty, and it benefits Sioux City. They're going to move all the way up to the Omaha 17-yard line. So, oh, well, 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter. First and 10 for Sioux City at the Omaha 17-yard line. So they'll have probably realistically one final play to get into the end zone here in the fourth quarter. So here comes Sioux City to the line of scrimmage. A four-receiver set, a Hail Mary play coming from 17 yards out for Turner. In the shotgun, sends two in motion. Takes the snap, drops back, flag on the play. It blows the play dead, and the throw is into the end or into the seats and incomplete. And we're going to get a false start on Sioux City, I think. We got a flag on the play, and I think it's a false start on Sioux City. That's going to back about five yards, and it eats up time off the clock. About that actually did not eat off the clock because the play was blown dead. So it's now first and 15 from the 22-yard line. The pass was incomplete regardless of the play blown dead or not. So it's first and 15 for Sioux City at the Omaha 22. Turner in the shotgun. He'll have another four receiver set with 15 seconds left in the fourth, trailing by 10, 60 to 50. Here's a shotgun set. Turner drops back to pass, 13 seconds. Steps up in the pocket, rolls out left, fires for the end zone, and it is incomplete. That stops the clock with seven seconds left in the fourth. And now Sioux City has realistically about one final play left in its season. So from 22 yards out, it's second and 15 with seven seconds left, and the Bandits trailing by 10, 60 to 50. The Beef on the verge of a postseason berth here in the CIF and a trip to Salina, Kansas. On a second and 15, Turner sends two in motion on a four receiver set, drops back to pass, and he's going for the end zone on this one. Fires right side, London makes the catch. He's got to get out of bounds. He will get out at the one, and the clock winds down. Clock hits triple zeros, and that will do it. The Omaha Beef are victorious over the Sioux City Bandits by a final score of 60 to 50. The Bandits missed the postseason for the first time since 2010 as their late season run was just not enough. Sioux City took three of their last four, and Omaha dropped three of their last four, but Omaha was still able to make it to the postseason. 60 to 50, the final score here tonight as the Omaha Beef knock off the Bandits and knock them out of the postseason for the first time since the last season in the IFL in 2010. So Sioux City's last season or end of the season heroics are all for naught, unfortunately, here in the CIF. Bandits lose 60 to 50 to the beef. We'll take a break and we'll come back with a post game wrap up in a few minutes. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Camden, Sioux City.